Emergency. Queen's Best Arrived. Emergency. Queen's Best Arrived. Emergency. Queen's Best Arrived. down to the queens hello ladies and gentlemen everybody inside and outside of the gender spectrum and welcome back to stardom quest the best weekly stardom podcast anywhere in the world i am zoe's alex and i'm joined by dylan hi dylan hi alex hi everybody you know you missed us uh it's been a couple weeks um my discord kind of bugged out for a second so i was like am i here but yeah we're good um yeah five stars underway um what we are approximately 30 matches in. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's still a lot, lot, a lot to go. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's lovely. Because you, you, you wanted us to take last week off. Just we'll peel the curtains back. Um, mm. You were like, we're going to need this. <laughs> like we, we're, we're on thin ice already. Um, and I was like, no, we'll be fine. Don't worry. And then, yeah, four days into this tournament, I'm already like, okay, this is a lot. <laughs> I haven't watched this much in a long time. So, yeah, yeah that week off was definitely needed uh, just to charge the batteries. So, you know, we'll, we'll be here for the rest of the tournament, but I, I cannot guarantee we're going to be very into it because some, some of this stuff is not good. But, um, you know, we'll get to that. Um, we do have Marigold. We probably won't focus on Marigold as much, but we'll, you know, we'll keep our eyes on it. Um, as always, Head on over to the 5 co for all of the latest articles and podcasts from the wonderful world of wrestling. Go on over to the YouTube channel, which is where this show and a bunch of other shows like Actress Stage go up. Uh, given the hectic schedule of Japanese wrestling, I highly doubt there's a No Limit recording soon. Like, what's happened there? What's going on with that? Uh, Scott changed the goddamn show. He wants no to do a recent way. Nakajima show. So we're going we're gonna to watch a recent Nakajima show, a seedling show from... At some point, I don't know. It, it, yeah. He, he was like, I don't know. It's August. How will we watch Reese Nagajima? I was like, well, that means that we have to like find one. Yeah, and we we did, but it, yeah, but we'll. Okay. At some point, did she did she ever get an season. intergender anniversary match? I think would you do something like that? No, I I hmm. want to say that he picked a Nanai match. It, oh, it's, it's, was it or, is it the hair something. match? Maybe, but I feel like we, it's either the hair match or a match uh, like similar to it. Not similar to mm. it, but around the same era, because I remember the card for the hair match maybe wasn't good. Uh, or maybe we did pick this one. Maybe we did. This looks good. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh... We, we talked about this like two weeks ago. We haven't talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. So yeah, yeah. Steve kind of blends together at that, at that point in time, because it was just yeah. a recent and I consistently and, on every show uh, and in max some voltage. form of fashion yes and, and max, max voltage. voltage um yeah all right well that sounds fun um i guess we have to start with stardom um stardom wrestlers outside of stardom we, we, should, we should probably start with mari gold and just like get it done should we not uh i know no, no we'll, we'll leave them to the end they have a cork and i think they deserve a little bit of you know the, the they both have gorkins actually next week uh, yeah well marigold has a recent nakajima so you know it's Good a point. bit of a win um yeah so stardom wrestlers outside of stardom i don't know what hanako is up to i haven't kept up uh i imagine she's either wrestling or has wrestled already in america she wrestled, uh, jada stone oh that's cool okay yeah, I like that, that was her first match out there or out here i should say who is that I for uh new japan oh right okay yeah oh i might, I might, I might watch that i like jada stone yeah she, she's she's been doing stuff. Uh, yeah. I haven't been paying attention to it too much, but yeah, she's been she's been out and about. Uh, Mina also out and about wrestled. Yeah, I was Legend. gonna I was gonna say Rachel Mina. Ring. Mina's feuding with with Ty of Valkyrie on Ring of Honor. Um, Wait, real? Like for real? I think so. Yeah, people were saying she's feuding with Taya, and then and they wow. like booked it for Ring of Honor. So, wow. but they must have aired it on AEW because people were talking about it, like on That's AEW Day. So I don't fully know, um, but I know she did wrestle on Ring of Honor. Um, so that's fun. That was definitely worth missing the the Grand Prix for, you know, 
And I like Taya. I think Taya is good in, in Ring of Honor. She just like had a career renaissance out of nowhere, but really, sure, yeah, she she was like randomly like really good when I was watching the TV tournament, and I was like, dude, where's this been? So yeah, you know, not not not, not talking down on Taya, but you know, we could have had a Mina five star here. That's you know, I'm not I'm not sure it was worth missing out. Well, um, we'll talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the big obviously. You know, Stardom Masters outside Stardom match is that earlier today it was announced that the main event of Sariism Chapter Five is it? I think it's five. Yes. Um, is crazy match Mayu Iwatani and Sari versus Chihiro Hashimoto and Veni. These motherfuckers are running up the board, man. This is that ridiculous. Is <laughs> that is one of the most ridiculous matches like you this... could possibly book. This uh, this five star has already put Mayu very comfortably in my number one wrestler of the year spot on my uh-huh. match guide, and Sari's not far behind, and she has a dream star ahead of her. Um, and these motherfuckers just want to run up the oh fucking God. board, bro. Like, do you <laughs> like what are we doing here? It's insane. It's funny because that's probably the first Sariism show as well where I've been like that card's kind of yeah, but then the main event is like one of the most insane things I've ever seen. Um. I guess it depends on who Mio wrestles, because that could be pretty cool too. But yeah, that three-way match is just weird, isn't it? The the wait, which is it like Ito, Ito, Jaguar, and you maybe? Just three completely See, random wrestlers. But, but that that sounds like it would randomly either beast or be like literally the worst match ever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. either just like randomly these motherfuckers just go at it, or it's just like it's complete wash. Um, also outside of stardom is uh, Sai Ida is teaming with Ryo Mizunami to take on Chanyota and Zones in a muscly tag match. That is uh, that is on September 10th at Shinjuku Face, and that is going to go crazy. Like that is like just beef. To it the is max. funny because Chanyota was like, "I would really like a singles match with Sai Ida," and then they're like, "Okay, we'll get you an tag." Uh, which I mean, for and I've I've been saying this that's like Chanyota is uh focusing on on her bodybuilding stuff so she's cutting weight super aggressively so like wrestling a high intensity singles match probably isn't smart for her body um because when you're on a cut like that so like on such an extreme cut uh it's not probably not best to be you know concussing yourself and dropping yourself on your head in a singles match like that though then again that is very likely to just happen Mm, in the tag match (laughs) Cause that's kind of what they, what they, what they do. So, yeah, I'm super excited for that tag match. Uh, Jan Yoda and Saida are a match made in heaven, and that'll be super, mm-hmm. super fun. All right. Um, and I think that Sanami is as well. All... As fucking Aniki, oh yeah, I mean Anaki is great. Like a princess cup finalist teaming with Saida. That's pretty crazy. Yes, but also, uh, Rima Zanami is above all that. That's the thing. Rima Zanami, like true. she. She needs to win the belt from Miu. I'm sorry, uh, just because like. No, nah, that's fine. Yeah. This no, no. this this I'm outsider not, is the best member of the TGPW roster. She isn't even on it. Uh, that's and it's not that's not even like that big of a slight. It's just Ryuma Zanami's that fucking good. <laughs> she is a beast. She is a beast. Um, that is all of the stardom wrestlers outside stardom that I can think of. Um, because I don't know the date. In, in, like, yeah, we we what, missed what the dipper. We missed yeah. the uh, the wave. Oh yeah, May Sarah Kohaku was just okay. Like it was just that's, it was just good. That's a shame. I'm, that all a shame. of May Sarah's matches in the tournament have been better than it, in my opinion. Better or like on the same level, pretty much. Hmm. You know what? I'd buy it. I'd buy it. I think wave can be a bit hit or miss sometimes. Um, it also went the... 15, so it's she's oh, had yeah, of course. Okay. She's had a, what three 15 minute time limit draws in this month. That's insane. It's the 13th this tournament's been weird for that kind of stuff. Speaking Talk of this it. tournament, it got underway on August 10th with the opening round of Yokohama Budokan. This had 1,587 fans, uh, down about 200 from last year's opening round, but that's that's a pretty negligible difference. It is still a lot better than what they used to do for the first day of the GP. Um, so you know that that's they'll take that. Um, I have staunchly avoided undercard matches. I do not need undercard matches in my life right now. So I went straight yeah. to the tur- tournament action. But oh, you for 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 context here, um, me and Scott because the show was on so late, 
uh, but it was an important show, me and Scott decided to watch it together to make each other stay up. Uh, and that is important right. when it gets to a certain match later down the stretch where I need to to say uh, how much I started yelling to Scott uh, in pain. So, yes, that is contextually what happened here. I Yeah, we skipped the, the pre-show matches. We kind of just That's fine. didn't watch that. <laughs> I'm going to make an internal guess at what match made you yell. <laughs> and when you bring it up, I'm going to say whether I was right or not. So... It, internally yeah. well, picking a match. <laughs> there were a few matches pretty... on this card that made me made me, you know, just down. But yeah, but one, there's only yeah, there's only there's like one. one or two that I could see <laughs> that made you yell. Because one of them might have been yeah. good yelling. It might have been good yelling, but it was probably bad yelling. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't good yell at this show. That's crazy. Okay. Well, like there was good matches. Don't off. get me wrong. This this, this show had. Most of the good matches of the tournament. <laughs> yes, so yes, it did. Um, we kicked off with uh, the the opening Blue Stars A Block match. Anna J of AEW beat Seoriano in five and a half minutes with a flash pinfall to move up to two points. Um, I thought were this was about a solid. That, which is yeah, strange. they were. This is turn. This like... is how tournaments work. <laughs> like, are you new here? You know, Seriano's game sure I lost like Kelly Klein up. or something else, or somebody worse. I'm pretty uh, sure than Kelly Klein. Yeah, it was worse than Kelly Klein. It was uh, yeah. Mandy Leon, wasn't it? Didn't didn't Brandy Rhodes beat somebody in a, in a tournament once as well? Like, it would have been the Cinderella because she wasn't there for the first yeah. star. But I think so. Yes. I prefer not to go back and get upset about it now. <laughs> Yeah, no, that that that's fair. We we um nobody really wants to reminisce on a way to tie Brandy, um, which is funny because that like landed in the middle of like a pretty a really good era of a way to tie like a like that post uh that that post uh draft post, era post. with both Hazuki and Hana, you know, mm -hmm. in the group that was like only a thing for a couple months. Uh, but Brandy was there, so no. Yeah. Well. All right. Um, I thought Anna J. In credit to her, she adjusted to stardom pretty well. Um, you know, she was able to keep up with Siriano here, and she was able to keep up with everybody that she's wrestled so far. Like she has really adjusted to the pacing really well. Um, like the matches are fine. I thought this was like a solid opener. You know, nothing insane, but I think given how some people acted like Anna J. was going to be the worst wrestler on of all time. That that's a success in some ways. Yeah, I mean, she hasn't been the worst in the tournament. Yeah. So, you know, that's all. That's, that's all you need. Um, but yeah, I thought the match was fun. Like, I like, I, I didn't think it was like, like at first, I was like, you know, that was like a that was for what it was. That was a good match. I kind of like retracted that a little bit because it's like, eh, well, it was not, it was barely a match. Uh, this kind of, you know, but I thought that it was like a solid enough match. Uh, you know, Anna J did her work you know she she doesn't have that deep of a of a move set but she did her stuff and she did it well and siriano was great opposite her um so it was a it was a fine little match you know mm -hmm. i can't complain like i think i think uh i think if if this match this ano match is kind of like the base of what anna j is operating off of i don't mind you know what i mean because yeah. i think from here, I, I didn't like the kid match. Uh, I thought that the Ano match was better, um, even though it was, you know, much shorter. Uh, I think if Anna J can like impress once or twice uh, and keep having these consistently not bad matches, uh, I'll be cool. You know, I, I won't mind. Yeah. All right. Uh, our next match saw Konami beat Rocka in the Red Stars A block. Uh, Konami won in six and a half minutes with a knee kick. Uh, yes, rip that's what knee. it says. Ripcord knee. Yeah. There's a great description there from the, from Stardom. Um, they kind of just did the good type of heel versus heel match where they were both just kind of being tyrants yeah. to one another. Yeah, like they were both like, "Hey, I'm gonna cheat." No, I'm gonna cheat. Like, and they were they were like trying to cheat each other. Um, so you know, I thought it was pretty fine. Uh, Rock is motivated, I think, for this tournament. You can tell she she's mm -hmm. trying, which is always good i think it raises her baseline and um, i thought konami was good as well she just does lots of stuff and she is clearly into this heel run like she she clearly gives a shit and so i think she's 
a lot cleaner with a lot of stuff that she's doing than she was in God's Eye and even towards the end of her last run. Like, she's just, she's really on her game in a lot of ways. And so, you know, I thought this was, this was another fine match, uh, pretty short. And obviously, the heel versus heel stuff can only be so good. Um, but I did enjoy both performances. Yeah, I thought it was, you know, funny enough. I didn't take much else out of it. I thought, you know, it was whatever. Um, I, I do think that like Ruaka is a very funny is very funny when she wants to be, and so I think that that's kind of you know that made this fun. Don't like the ripcord knee from Konami. I think it's kind of lame. Um, yeah, but yeah, you know, I, I you know, all right, it could have been worse. Definitely, yeah. definitely could have been worse. No, Honestly, I think that that's might be. We'll, we'll we'll talk about it, but I think that might be the story <laughs> of Ruaka's tournament. Where it's like you think it's going to be like the worst, but it's like it's usually just like kind of bad. <laughs> okay, all right. You know? um, well, our next match was uh, in Blue Stars A block. Uh, you, Miyu Amasaki beat Zena in two minutes with the Amano Hashidate. Um, this was pretty like it was as good as you're going to get for like 120 Nothing seconds. Happened. You know, like yeah, like two things. Zena chopped in the her. Match. She was beaten on her, and yeah. then she got rolled up. Like it was, you know, man, it was it, fine. Uh, this could have been really fun because, like, the, like, again, like, it, it was two minutes. They did three spots. So it's not like there was, like, much happening. Uh, but the three things that did happen Xena chopping the fuck out of her, Xena breaking her back with the Thunderstruck and, uh, or with the inverted Thunderstruck, and then Kevin winning with the Amano Hashidate. Really cool. Like, I thought that, like, you know, this, these first three matches I kind of have rated around the same. Like, I don't really have any of them, like, above or low. Honestly, the first two five matches uh are rated around the same um but i thought that like for what this was i had fun with it because it was like cool like the mm -hmm. thunderstruck was nasty and that's all i really wanted you know what i mean yeah i mean you know uh, there's only so much you can say but they both did their stuff well and i think yeah. you know credit to them um our next match was in blue stars b uh, Rana Yagami got the upset win over Saki Kashima in three and a half minutes with what they are calling a cross arm. It's a, another great description from the Stardom website. Um, it was a roll up. Yeah. Cross it was arm like, one. I don't know, maybe a cross <laughs> arm roll up? I don't know. Um, yeah, Saki's. So I, I realized there was a canon, it was like a lore step missing because Saki mm. Kashima said, I do not want to be in a GP anymore. I don't want to do this. So when she shows up here with a different music and a sponsored <laughs> advertisement, I was like, oh, in in character, she's done this because she wants some cash. And that is pretty funny. Um, so <laughs> she's here just to advertise her sponsor and does not care beyond that. It is very entertaining. That is why we love Saki. So oh, yeah. th like this was this was fine, but her whole thing is she doesn't want to be here. So it was kind of just Rana trying to do stuff um and it was you know it was good but that's about it and it's so yeah. <laughs> it's not much to say yeah no i you the ad read stuff was funny uh and yeah. rana's new gear looks cool those are my those are that, that's not yes okay. rana looks, looks very moral um, that's true that's true uh our next match was in the Blue Stars B block uh Suzu Suzuki and Hanan wrestled to a, a double count out in nine minutes um this was really good and then the finish was just like like a skit you know it was almost comedic they were just like pulling each other from the rope for forever um so it was it was a really good match but it, it didn't get to peak um and the See, finish was just kind of a, a shoulder shrug yeah this this frustrated me because it's like i felt like early on they had some how long did this one go did you... nine minutes yeah i felt like early on like first half of the match they kind of struggled chemistry wise but then they like got it for like two minutes and then they went outside yeah and i was just like what the fuck man like you know like because like at first i was like oh maybe these two like just don't work well together but then they like started to they like really like you know built up a, a head of steam hanan dropped suzu on her head suzu was like heating up like things were like really starting to like get heated and like you know intense and then it just stopped um so i was deeply disappointed by this match uh because of that um mm. because e even so i think i think that the it's crazy I have to say this after three days of, of competition. The other double count out was better. <laughs> yeah. So 
Uh, I, I, I think that, I like, the execution was somehow worse, though. <laughs> yes, it was. Way, man, my favorite wrestler is being real hokey in this tournament. I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah. Love her, but there are some there are some things outside of the show. Um, Mocha has also had some questionable moments where I'm like, "What are we doing? What, what's what's the story I, here?" I, I've liked Mocha this turn. I think she's done well. But... It is, but I feel like the draw on day one was a bit uh, at left field. But we'll we'll talk about it. Don't worry. Yeah, we'll get there. Uh, that comes pretty soon. But yeah, I was yeah. deeply disappointed by this um, because it, it felt like like I was prepared to be disappointed because after a couple minutes I was like, "Oh, maybe these two just just, just don't gel well." Uh, but then they started gelling well. I was like. What was I? What was I worried about? And then they double crossed me, <laughs> and were like, "No, you're still gonna be disappointed by the end of this match. Don't worry." I was like, "That's lovely." So, yeah, um, yeah, disappointing. Uh, you know, this this show really needed somebody to um, to grab it by the neck and just deliver a, a strong match, and so they flow. They flew in Hazuki, <laughs> who is. <laughs> essentially perfect for that role uh, yeah. because her and Manami had a pretty good match here in the Red Stars A block. Hazuki won in nine minutes with a diving senton. I thought this was really good. I thought Hazuki just was almost trying to teach this outsider how to work. She was like, listen, man, you don't step in here. I'm going to blitz you. You're in stardom now. And Manami tried to fight back, but she just couldn't get an edge in against Hazuki, who was just mm. like a freight train. It was it was really well done. See, it's it's interesting because like matches like the it, on a card this heavy, um, this is a match that kind of suffered because I was like they definitely could have gotten an extra couple minutes, um, it, because this match was really really good. Yeah, it was the first like actual like good, actively good wrestling match on the show, um, and I I really liked it. I thought Manami really showed out. I thought that like. You know, there's certain things about the Sendai girls training that you could just see uh, she, like, excels at. I mean, like, uh, one thing I, I pointed out while watching this was that, like, Minami uh, got a rope break off of a move, like, uh, you know, off a pin that looked impossible. Like, the ang- the camera angle and just, like, the ring positioning, it didn't look like an obvious, oh, well, she's going to get the ropes. But she did, and it was, like, super well-timed and just, like, small, like, ring awareness type of shit like that um, and, like, well-done, well-placed moves is, is something that Sunday Girls uh, trainees really excel at. And I think that really showed through here. Um, and, yeah, Hazuki's... Hazuki's Hazuki, man. Like, you know, it's... it's yeah. Thank God Hazuki's in that block. Because uh, <laughs> that that oof, that could have been oof. All right, let's 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 not let's let's not do that. Um, after that, then we got on to our next match, which was in the Red Stars B block as May Sarah and Tomoki Inaba wrestled to a 15 minute time limit draw. Um, I thought this was our first great match of the tournament. You know, yes. it, it got the time to be great, whereas, you know, Hazuki and, and Manami didn't. I think what I really enjoyed here is Smoke Inaba is really good at the start of a match and at the end of a match. And May Sarah is very good at all of it. So when Inaba was lulling, I think May Sarah was able to keep things going until it was time for Tomoka to kick her in the skull, which is obviously really cool. Everybody loves that. Um, so I thought these two worked really well uh, with each other. I think we saw kind of some of Tomoka's weaknesses, but also what she offers in terms of how she wrestles and how if you fill in the gaps for her, you can have a great match with her. I think I, I was way higher on this match than most people were um, to a certain degree. This is like one of my favorite matches of the tournament so far. Um, I thought that they worked each other's legs super purposefully. Uh, I think, you know... Uh, uh, on the preview, I forget if it was on the preview or if it was when I did Scott show that I was like, man, do not have May Sarah go all techers with Inaba. Um, and then they did. And I was completely wrong. Like I was proven completely wrong. I thought this match was so well done in the technical space um, because it, it, both of them were doing it for a reason, right? May Sarah was attacking Inaba's legs because she doesn't want to get fucking kicked in the back anymore. Uh, and Inaba was attacking May's legs because May runs super fast and she doesn't want her to run fast no more. I think that, like, that basic premise of them both, like, targeting the leg, uh, mixed with May Sarah's ex, ex, excellent, excellent selling, um, I think it just made this match 
tremendous. Um, I would have loved there to be a finish. You know, I I think that that is kind of one thing that was holding it back from being like uh, on the level of a Shuri Starlight Kid, for example, uh, is that it just didn't have a finish. I, I think that they could have uh, not even like tightened it up, but they could have definitely, you know, ran this to 14 minutes, 1430, and had like May Sarah last second roll up or whatever. Um, the draws is, is kind of a, a story of the tournament so far, as we'll talk about a little bit later. So I, I get that that wasn't, you know, the point. But I, I love this match. I, I thought that they both did tremendous limb work. They both sold very well. Inabo was kicking homegirl. May Sarah was running super fast. She was selling, like I said. Uh, I, I really loved it. Uh, like, this is this is the match that, like, the day later I was thinking about uh, mm-hmm. a lot. Because I was like, man, that was really well done and really well worked. Um, because, like, the two better matches on this card, it's like... Yeah, they were just better because they're like, what the fuck do you expect? You know what I mean? Like, like it's like, it's a very standard better. But this match really impressed me, even if it was capped by the draw and by some of Inaba's shortcomings, uh, like you said, in the middle sections of the match. All right. Um, yeah, I don't really have more anything more to add there, but, you know, I thought, I thought it was our first great match of the show. Uh, probably will be mentioned again later when we do our, our top three of the tournament so far, maybe, for one of us. Um, but then we got on to our next match, which was in the Blue Stars A block. Uh, Siri beat Starlight Kid in 11 minutes with a White Tiger. And I would just like to apologize because I did say that you call Hazuki when you need a great match. I did forget Siri exists because she is the queen of the five-star um, if there's ever been anybody better in big match situations in this tournament, I don't know who. They, they do I mean, there, there's mind. starting to be a conversation about Sherry being like the greatest five star wrestler ever. Uh, Probably, yeah. Which is like, I mean, she's easily top three. I, it's oh, yeah. hard to think of anybody sure. that's like even on her level uh, consistently, you know, for the past four years. Uh, mm-hmm. She was the highlight of, of 2020, even though that tournament was pretty, pretty cheeks. Um, she was a highlight there, and then since then, she's been, like, the best wrestler of 2021, uh, like, second best wrestler of 2022. I, yeah, I think second best wrestler of 2020. Like, she's outside of, like, the winners, uh, which is unfair because the winners get to have an extra two matches that are really good. <laughs> so it's like, you know, like, sure, he's effectively on a, on a, on a fair playing ground, she's been the best wrestler pretty much every year. Um, mm. so... And this, this, you know, the start to this is, is no different. I think this match was very, very good. It was tremendous. Um, just, I think yeah. it was it was kind of uh, ironic almost. Uh, Siri debuted very Mayu-esque gear on yeah. a show where she beat the shit out of Starlight Kid um, and almost acted like Mayu does. She was just kind of like, this is my house and I'm going to mercilessly beat on you. Like, I haven't seen her this stiff in stardom in a while like this this reminds me while she was like on that uh, seed match you know when she she mm-hmm. was part of a recent nakajima's thing where she was just laying shit in that was kind of where she was here as well like she was just beating the crap out of starlight kid and as we know starlight kid excels when she is in there against somebody who is just gonna pound on her like she is an excellent baby face so she gave kid a really good heel to play off and i, I just thought this was fantastic the this is off topic. AEW is, is releasing a music video of Daniel Bryan's or Brian Danielson's career to Good Riddance Time of Your Life, which I think oh. is a very funny. Interesting. It's a very fu- yeah, I, I, you know, I don't know if you read the first two words, but that that song is meant to be ironic. Um, yeah, this match was great. I thought that Starlight Kid, uh, while Shuri is you know the one to chase in terms of match quality every year, um, I think Starlight Kid here just thrived and showed how great of a babysit face she is um she's one of the few baby faces that still genuinely gets sympathy from me uh like just like in ring which is why i was always so upset that they turned her heel because i was like no i genuinely like feel for this girl when she's getting beat up and i want her to do well and it's like like baby face star like kid is so engaging and and uh you know uh, alluring like that it's like i thought this that show through in this match where i was just like man like like i, I like i felt it you know i i got into it i invested because starlight kid is such a good baby face um 
and I, you know, I've been saying that for years now, but yeah, I thought Shuri did a great job. Uh, you know, I think this, again, this is however many years in a row of Shuri delivering on an insane level first day. Uh, last year's match with, with Suzu is a, is a good example. I think that match was probably better than this one, but I have them pretty much on the same level because uh, Starlight Kid's baby face, uh, you know, uh, it's just like her being a baby face is just so fucking good. I'm very happy <laughs> that she's a baby face for this tournament. From one great uh, baby face performance to another, our next match was a Red Stars B block. Um, Azumi beat Mom Watanabe in 11 and a half minutes with the Azumi Zushi. Um, and this was, again, I think another great match. Uh, I think, you know, Azumi's comebacks are just kind of the stuff of, of legend at this stage, especially in the five star. She's been such a good baby face for so long within the confines of this tournament. And then she always just finds something new to add. And so yeah. you add this renewed hate push for Momo and she's just coming in, swinging and ready to beat the shit out of everyone. And you have Azumi renewed as well in neo genesis and then she adds that top rope destroyer to the to the to the finish which was insane um that I, that finish alone bumped this up like i was like oh that, that was pretty good and then the finish happened I went, oh that's that's awesome <laughs> like that's, that's one of the best matches of the tournament yeah um so yeah azumi man what a wrestler she's she just keeps adding which it's is fucking... scary because she was already exceptional and now she just keeps getting better it's like how what where's the where's the end of this? Like how much better is she gonna get? So I thought that was great. And credit to Momo as well. I mean, I'm a big proponent of Momo. I thought she did her role really, really well. Yeah, I think Momo's been exceptionally consistent uh this tournament. Um I one thing I hate is that they don't put the uh the uh, backstage comments on the page anymore. Because Azumi yeah. said something very interesting, but I don't feel like going on twitter to find it uh where she was like you can where she was like you know i beat your ass today and you blame me for everything all the time you can't blame me for every like you can't blame me for everything and then like from that then that point on spoiler momo has lost and has been like is this azumi's fault (laughs) and i think that's really i think that's really funny is that like azumi kind of cursed her uh from the jump i love the punt stuff i thought that was really cool callbacks um even if i hated that story i thought that you know them calling back to that which was a thing they were talking about on twitter uh momo said i'm going to make you relive the trauma of breaking your nose um so azumi trying to do the punt and then momo getting it off right like that all was really really cool um this match was maybe a little bit weaker than their previous outings but i think they have such a consistency that like and like you said, I think the super destroyer and stuff near the end was like it like kept, brought it back. So it, it you know another great match from Momo and Uh Do they ever miss? No, especially not against each other. They're uh, they're pretty reliable pairing at this stage. Um, I don't know. Did I re- did I review these out of order for voices or is the website out of order? Because <laughs> um, I thought Saya versus Risa happened before this, but. Apparently no, no, no. Not. Zumi, Momo, and then Risa Kamatani. Oh, okay. I did it. I did do it out of order. That's pretty funny. Um, well, I guess we have to go to it. Um, yeah. Blue Stars B. Saya Kamatani beats Risa Sarah in 11 minutes with a Frankensteiner. We got our first look at heel Saya, the Phoenix Queen. Um, I, she is, like, perfect. Right, like the 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 entrance theme, the the stinger aside is pretty exceptional. I think her gear is great. I think the flag with the phoenix queen thing is a nice touch. Like she's got all of cool. it. I, I think I think yeah. flat the flag is like a cool through line callback. Yeah, she's got all of it, and but then she has I to don't wrestle. Agree, but yeah, like she I, she's Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt had all of it. And then he had okay, to but Bray Wyatt hit a crazy cross body. Zaya comes out and hit nothing crazy here. Like <laughs> Zaya does the spinning kick to the head pretty well. Now that she's a heel and doesn't have to do it fast. So she she she, she see, but that's that. the problem. What <laughs> I know, the, like, look, I'm not gonna now she her. not if she moves in slow motion. She's she, half her stuff. It's like yeah, that's the problem. This is where I started I, yelling. If you couldn't tell. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I, I had to guess. I, I guessed this one. Um, I feel like I knew she was going to take a long time. She has to rebuild how she wrestles entirely. Like, fundamentally, she has to be a different wrestler now. Um, and I can't imagine peckers and heel work were a big part of the stardom I- idols uh, curriculum. You know, I'm just going out on a limb here to say that she Talk probably didn't Tushio learn Nita that. and Tam Nakano? Probably not. Yeah, like, probably not the, the best the best basics. Even once um, Kagetsu got, got his hands on her, it's like, well, I, I, I'll help. <laughs> yeah. She's never been the the basics fundamentals wrestler. She was always the eye popping big bombs wrestler. So I'm gonna give her time to adjust, but she needs to make a lot of improvements. And it it got a lot worse than this. I thought they did enough bells and whistles here to make it work because she was getting oh boos. really. Like I thought Risa this Sarah. No, like Risa Sarah like was beating on her, and the crowd was going, "Yeah, kick her ass!" and I did all the chair stuff, which kind of took away from Saya doing her faces. So I thought they did enough bells and whistles to make this fine. Um, but yeah, it was it was not a great starting point. Saya just Saya. feels like okay. How can I be? How can I say this like in a respectful manner? Well, Saya I'm... Kamatani seems, and I think this is like this is in relation to the response on Twitter. Uh, Sai Kamatani is a very attractive cosplayer. Right. Who everybody is like, oh my god, she she's got it. And I was like, did you watch most of this? Like, did you what? Like, she's not. She's she's pretending to be something. And like, I don't know. Like, I, I the uh, the entrance was cool. It, you know, it was it was cool enough. But I still felt like people were like, and uh, you know. I think maybe the word itself just pissed me off more than anything. People were like, oh, she has aura. I was like, no, you just find her attractive. This is still kind of lame. Like the the the, the like I said, the flag is cool. I, the music's decent. Uh, I actually like the ring gear. I, I thought that the, the entrance oh, gear yeah, the was, great, yeah. was super extra, uh, which, you know, is kind of the point. So I, I don't hate it too much. But everything just feels very forced. Uh, in ring, she's really bad. Um, yeah like offensively bad you know like I, I was listening to ring post radio the other day and you know scott was talking about where it's like it's like this match wasn't offensively bad and ryan was like that's actually a really good metric <laughs> to, to for bad matches that it's like well was it just like ugh, or was it like offensively bad this was offensively bad both of sai kamatani's matches in this tournament have been offensively bad um mm. yeah no at, at this point I was just yelling at Scott. I was like, I need to go to bed. I can't do this. I don't want to be here right now, Scott. <laughs> and he's like, but Mai's going to be on. And I was like, I know Mai's going to be on. Just, and that's what, see, that's what I, kept me through the, like kept I'm me through the show. I feel generous because she gets heat. And I feel like... But she doesn't. No, 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 no. She doesn't. That was the thing. Because we actually talked about this. She, I don't know. she got booze was... cause she, because she refused to engage. Yeah, but that, she that's she more pretended to lock up and then was like, uh, okay. she did the fucking no, eye thing. As well, and as I was well, like, that's when... not key. No, because when Risa Sarah was like getting her own back on her, the crowd would get into it as well, which I think is more than the other Which is impressive. Because, yeah, I mean, and Risa Sarah is not popular in stardom. So no. that is impressive. She is, she is a um, heel. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Like, I, I do think I, there's, there's potential with this, and I'm just going to have to give it a lot of time. Uh, because as much as I kind of am like, oh, she's mother, she's serving cunt, and she is. You can serve cunt and be really bad. Like, I get it. Because um, she does have everything. The bell does have At to ring, and you do have to deliver. <laughs> yeah. Like, the bell does have to ring, and you have to deliver. Um, and a lot of the time, I'm getting serious The Room vibes, where you're not meant to find yeah. The Room funny. It is, a, it is meant to be like a serious movie. But everybody finds it really funny. And I think Saya is on the wrong side of that, where she's trying so hard to do these things, and I just laugh. So I probably shouldn't be. Saya Kamatani, very Riverdale. That's, that's my <laughs> okay. take. Very Riverdale. That's very crazy. Riverdale pro yeah. wrestler is is yeah. heel Saya Kamatani, um, because it's like you're you're meant to laugh, right? Mm, right. I don't know. I don't, I I don't know, know what not, else she's supposed to do when she growls in Tecla's face. When she growls at, <laughs> and and like her like her heat thing is just putting her hand over your so mouth. Good. That's her submission hold. 
is just putting her hand over your mouth and doing a bunch of weird faces. Like, what are we doing? They all sell it like they're choking. And I was like, you have to know. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Like, just choke her. Like, if you're gonna oh choke god, her, just, oh just choke her. Yeah. Hecla was like selling it like she was breathless. And I was like, you have a nose. <laughs> <laughs> you have a nose. You have full function of literally every limb. Like she's not doing anything to you. Oh, <laughs> man. She's not. She's not that strong. Just move her fucking hand. <laughs> Dude, she looks like she has noodle arms. It's really bad. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh... It's, I get it. I think people who who are into it are just like hot woman, and I get it. Which, hot wrestlers yeah, are I hot. Mean. That's the whole Fair. point. Like, like Hulk made a career I, like, of I it. That... Like Jeff Hardy used to whip his top off, and that's that was the whole point of the match. You know, people like I get lo- it. People still love Kota Ibushi. Yeah, yeah, people love him because he's hot. Like that's it. The hot wrestlers can be hot, and that's like half their appeal. And I get it. But yeah, it, the, <laughs> she needs to get better. Especially because I I worry a look at her as like the next leader because Tora obviously has you know barely functioning knees, so you're gonna have to move on from her after this reign. I, I would assume that's why she's not in the tournament. So if Sai is gonna be leading this thing, she really does have to get better. Yeah. What is with Tora, though? They took her out of the tournament, but they have her working tags. Like, I thought taking her out of the tournament was meant to protect her physically. But then she's well, it is. She's not, she's not bumping in the tags. That's beast, actually. That's pretty beast. Yeah. I do I mean, like she... Tora just being like, I am choking you out and not no, selling. No, legitimately, I didn't great. watch I didn't watch uh, any tags I didn't have to, but on the second show, it was Natsuko and Rina versus Meltier. And Rina yeah. did all of the heavy lifting, and then Natsuko just beat the fuck out of Tam and won. That was it. Beast. Uh, so yeah, new they, Tora is great. By her we didn't not talk about it, up. but Tora with the belt and with a bit more, a bit better booking is really fun. I think she's cool enough. You know. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't love her stuff because it's like, like that tag, that Melty tag was not good. Uh, <laughs> so it's like you know, but also she's not in the focus because she's not in the tournament. Yeah. So it, I, I don't expect her to be working hard necessarily um two people i do expect to be working harder than they are yes um micah beat natsupoi in our red stars a block match uh, in 13 minutes it doesn't actually tell me the finish it just says shrimp um uh, was it roll like a pit no I, yeah micah won off of a roll through so i think right. poi got her in a roll up and then micah rolled through and won oh yeah, it is warm in here <laughs> That laughing, Warm. really. Yeah, the laughing as well. You know, yeah, that's it. This up. Um, so Micah has a new look. New entrance theme. I like the entrance theme. Very main event, big star. See, I don't, think, I don't think I'm allowed to be disrespectful to two women in a row. Because uh, I, I was pretty mean to tell Saya. Um, so I'm going to plead the fifth on Micah. <laughs> I, I like some of the Micah. I like the short hair. I think it fits her. Um, I think the pants are shit, I will say. I don't like the little decal flames you've got going down there. She, she, it reminds me, it's very old school. Like, I feel like sometimes when I'm watching her, if I don't see her face, I think, oh, is that Utami? And I'm just like, wait, no. And I'm just like, yeah. wait, is that a wrestler from the 80s? Because, uh, like, I don't know, like, it, it just her vibe, like, her, her look looks very old school, even though, like, I can't no, pinpoint a single wrestler from the 80s, like a single Joshi wrestler from the 80s that, like, wore anything similar to it. I did uh, wonder if they like if that was a tarot thing where he was like, "Hey, listen, man, they looked androgynous as fuck in the Nagayo days. Yeah. Can you do that?" And I mean, I guess Micah I guess went, yeah. the long pants was like you know a li- you know like a a pretty common thing, or like lion yeah, soda, you know, like yeah, you know, like I, I think longer pants was so like yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I do like vi- the mask like, thing though as well. I like that she brings. Oh, the I like the Kitsune mask. It's a nice look. Yeah. I, I I think that's like a cool because she's very she's very folklore heavy uh, like historically like she she really likes Japanese folklore and stuff like that so I think her leaning into like different areas of that is kind of cool um, she's already done a lot of the uh, 
I don't remember his name, but like she she's she's gone into like different areas of of Japanese mythology, and I think that's kind of cool that she's landed on the Kitsune. Um, I wish her gear was better. I th- I think that like the gear could have like accentuated the kind of vibe like the with the mask better. Um, they're kind of like two different pieces of different things. It feels like, but mm-hmm. yeah, you know, uh, her Micah and Natsupoi are both trying something different in this tournament. Uh, and I don't think we have the room for that in this block uh, for two people trying out stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I did kind of think that. I was like, this is this match was kind of weird. Like, it was really yes. good, but Micah didn't do a lot of her Micah stuff. And T- Natsupoi went back to that version of her that we've seen once, where she's just, like, chopping people down arm. with submissions. Yeah. I was like, that is not the match I expected from Natsupoi and Micah, <laughs> of all people. Yeah, because Micah um, could just toss her. Like, yeah, it, it felt very. Yeah, uh, yeah. like it was Natsupoi uh, basically doing stuff and then Micah barely getting back into it. Now, the Lariat exchanges were good and stuff like that, but it was it was definitely a match that should have been better. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. Is that it's like, and like I said, in that block, uh, I think it kind of needs all the help it can get. It can get. Because uh, that block isn't the hand wave block. Like, the like Blue B, I'm at the point where it's like, Hanan. Just don't get injured. Like, just you could coast. I don't care anymore. Uh, <laughs> you know, just you know. I literally said, "Hey, it's her twentieth birthday. She should just get shit faced and not give a fuck about the rest of the tournament because yeah, it's a bad block." Um, but the red A block is good enough to where it's like, I I think it needs all the help it could get from its two mm. two of its three best wrestlers, and I think Mike and Natsupor are in strange form. Uh, even even after the subsequent days of of block action, I don't know. I like Nats Point and Unimon. Well, that was yeah, really good. It was good. It was good. Um, but yeah, it that that's kind of how I'm feeling. Uh, yeah, solid match though. It it it, it wasn't bad. It's just odd. Yeah, whoever started them is getting through the new themes though. They're they're pretty great. Um, I think the yeah. hate theme is awesome. I hate, really love yeah, the hate it theme. Is, it is. Uh, I think the Neo Genesis theme is good. I, I've seen some people say it's not good, but I like it. Um, Micah's theme is great, and and Sai's theme I think is awesome as well. Oh, I, so. I don't, I don't like Micah's new theme. I think Micah's like, is very main event. I like, like Sai's. Like I, I think Sai's new theme is cool. Uh, not as mm-hmm. good as as Skydance, but you know. Um, but I, I think Micah's is a bit. Yeah. Oh, uh, I overall, I'm not as good. high on on Micah's presentation and. Like I, I think it's all just a bit. I, it's crazy. Her presentation was so good that briefly I went, "Oh my god, Tam isn't winning this tournament." And then Tam showed up, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh yeah," because um, in our main event, um, Mayu Utani beat Tam Nakano in just under fourteen minutes with a d- double, double point uh, dragon suplex, which is like the big the one. Two step. The two step. Yeah, two step. Yeah. Um, so Tam had her hair cut. We didn't get to talk about this angle. Yes. Cora and Hate. Eat down Cosmic Angels, cut Tam's hair, and said we're going to remove idols from this company. So if that doesn't tell you the direction of this company, I don't know what does. <laughs> um, and so Tam has like shorter hair. It looked a lot shorter in the uh, intro thing. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if she's wearing extensions or something, but it looked shorter there in the video. I know. Uh, Six Star was so excited for a lesbian Bob. I I hate to break it to him, but I don't think it's a lesbian Bob. No, I, think I don't think Tam would ever rock hair. that. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it's. She did once upon a time, uh, but not yeah. now, though. Not now. No. Um, this match was fantastic, and yeah. this went as I expected. I, I did a victory lap when because we were talking last week, and I said, uh, "Well, they like hurt Tam's knee, and they're gonna lean into that so hard. She is definitely losing to Mayu, and you and Scott just just weren't going with it. But then uh, Mayu did beat Tam." Because I, I forget, was... I forget that. Well, even I even said it that it's like, well, they might do the Hazuki thing, where last year yeah. it was like they were building to Hazuki and Mayu for the IWGP belt, and then Mayu just beat her in the tournament and mm-hmm. said, "You're not fucking challenging me, bitch." The fuck? And it's like, oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so they did that, which I didn't think they would do twice in a row, but I guess you know, different management. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll admit you were right here. That 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 was on us. All right. Um, I thought this was an excellent match uh, as well. Um, Mayu, for as good as she is as a baby face, is a sadistic freak because Tam had a sore knee and Mayu was just like, I'm picking that shit apart. Like, I'm going to hurt you. 
And that is the best form that Mayu ever takes. Um, you know, I think Tam working from underneath is always something that she's been good at. You know, I think it just lets mm. her pick her moments to forearm the shit out of people and do her stuff. Um, Mayu made the violet shooting look good, which is insane. Because I that move wasn't good when Kagetsu was doing it. Like that that move has never really looked good. But Mayu always makes it look insane. Um, so I thought Tam's stuff looked great. Her fire was great. Mayu just mercilessly beating the shit out of her was fantastic. Um, I would say this is probably the best match of the tournament so far. And yeah. I think it kicks Tam's story off pretty easily where she you know, starts with a sore knee and loses her first matches and has to come back. Yeah, no, I agree. I thought this match was tremendous. It was obviously the best match of the tournament so far. Um, not as good as their match last year, again. Uh, I th- but I think that match last year was such a moment in time. 15 minutes in Gorokin, it was just an absolute fucking classic. Um, I need to go back and rewatch it and probably recreate it, because that shit was probably higher than I even had it. Um, because I wasn't doing the decimal points at that point, so it's like, you know, might be an 8.5 oh, and not an 8. So you never know. Um, that, yeah. yeah. But so yeah, I thought this match was tremendous. Uh Mayu is the best wrestler. <laughs> you know, like uh yeah, I, I love this. Um it might be the best match of the tournament. I don't know. Actually, I'm 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 kinda eyeballing a different match now. Like I now that I think about it, I'm sat down thinking. Uh we'll see. But yeah, I thought the match was very, very, very good because Tam and Mayu are one of the most one of the best pairs in wrestling, frankly. Uh, Mayu brings the best out of Tam, and Tam doesn't even have to bring the best out of Mayu. Mayu's just, like, there for it. Uh, but she does. So, yeah. Very, very, very good. Uh, Mayu winning. I love that they've teased the, the draw, because I thought it was going to go to a draw. Um, and I think, like, getting up against the, the time limit. Uh, how long does this one go? You have the times in front of you. Uh, oh, I've gone to the next page. It was, like, 1348 or something. Yeah, so... Yeah, so like you know, barely getting barely a minute before the or a bit over the, a minute before the time limit. I I I like that they pushed it as far as they could go. So yeah, I really really liked it. All right, yeah, I think with um, Julie and Utami gone, a big Mayu Tam match is now like the biggest match they have. I might be wrong there, but I feel like that's still the one in their wheelhouse that they can run because they yeah, still haven't it... done a full-on big Mayu Tam match. Um, and I don't think Tam has beat her yet in a, in a big she match. Hasn't. So she hasn't beat her still got that since she left Cos- She hasn't beat her since Cosmic Angels formed. Yeah, like that's still the big one, I think, is Tam beating Mayu. Um, and, you know, you can see why here I'm, with, with how well I'm eyeballing. Did. I'm eyeballing the Tokyo Dome. Hmm. I was thinking a historic crossover, but I could see it. I don't know. I, I think I think because Tam lost, uh, she has to. So my this isn't even fantasy booking because it's like it's not something that like I necessarily want, but it's something I could definitely believe. Uh, is I can see Tam winning the tournament still. Uh, mm-hmm. Tam going on to beat Natsuko, and then champion versus champion match winner takes all at the Tokyo Dome. Right. Because I, because I was like my the same, but the other way around. Mayu has one over on Tam, so mm-hmm. Tam getting the red belt would have one over on Mayu, uh, because you know, like, because Mayu would get her a get back, because th- there's no point for like Tam just lost straight up to to Mayu mm-hmm. in less than 15 minutes, so there's no point for Tam to go after the the IWGP belt uh, until she has collateral, um, at least like you know from a kayfabe like uh, just kind of story perspective, I think that's why I look at it like that. Plus, like you said, it's the biggest match they could do. If they're going to have one, two matches on that show, uh, give them the biggest match. Uh, and it, it'll probably be a, a big deal, be, you know, because Ghetto's not fully in charge of booking that one. <laughs> so I don't think yeah. his hatred for women can carry through as strongly as it can in the past. Well, see, I, I feel like I'm on the same line with you, but I'm just doing it the other way around, where historic crossover is Tam's um, VP cash in. And then her and Tora clash for big belts in December. See, but then you're wasting your you're, you're wasting your biggest match at Historic Crossover. Yeah, but they like Historic Crossover is like the biggest stardom show ever, technically. I'm like that's gonna but do. Then six, they're seven gonna thousand. be doing it. 
they're they're going to do they're going to do the Tokyo Dome. <laughs> for AEW though. For for the conglomeration, yeah. Mm, I don't know. I mean, do you see them getting time to do that when you're probably going to get so. a think, money match I think that's and the, another AEW women's title match? I think that's the one way you get time on that show is if you run the mm. biggest match. I don't know. Maybe. I could see it. Like I could see them going either way. But I, I think they might do crossover. Yeah. Yeah. Um but that was that show. Great first night, I thought. You know, pretty yeah. pretty good start to the tournament. Um the next show then was the next day, August eleventh in Shibuya. They did four hundred and seventeen fans, uh, a sellout number as well. It's probably one of the stronger numbers they've ever done for like a, just a random day um in Shibuya. Um, and the tournament action kicked off with a Red Stars A match. Micah beat Yuna Mizumori in nine minutes with a Mishinoku driver. Um, yeah, I didn't feel those nine minutes, but I definitely thought they would both be better. Um, but it was fine. I thought Yudamon did better than Micah did. That's that's my hot take. I thought that Yudamon showed up, she rose to the occasion, and I thought Micah, you know, was fine. Um, yeah. Well, fun. Um, yeah. Oh cool yeah, match. I said that Mike Maybe. underwhelmed. That's what I said. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't know. It was it was a fine opener. Unimon had a better match the next day, so I'm 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 blaming Micah. Um, our next match was Red Stars A. Hazuki beat Rocka in nine minutes um, to move up to four points. Wow. Well, um, the last yeah. the last two minutes were cool. The rest yes. of it wasn't. No. It was these hate matches are like okay at best yeah so um this was the start of four hate matches in a row i was watching I this show so. <laughs> with scott and zavi um, oh dear and zavi notoriously doesn't watch uh stardom house shows especially he'll watch a mayu match if if you know in fact that's why he was he was actually still watching with us because zaid and mayu intrigued him um and so <laughs> Uh, this was the the start of a bad road of matches. Um, yeah, that's yeah. fair. I, I could see that. Um, our next match was uh, in Red Stars A. Manami beat Konami uh, in just under ten minutes to to also move up to two points. Um, yeah, despite Konami being you know, in her in fo- on form, and M- Manami being a really good baby face, um, this definitely suffered from being the second consecutive hate match. Um, but I would say it was probably the best of the bunch. No. 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 Uh... For, this was the. Wait, oh was yeah. The oh sorry. Worst. Yeah, Momo and Abe. Yeah, sorry, Momo. <laughs> I, I have this was, as the I worst. Was a different show entirely. Um, yeah. I have this as the worst of the bunch because this was similarly bland to Hazuki and Raka, but it didn't have a strong finishing stretch. Like it didn't have Hazuki yeah, coming back and be like the fuck Konami I'm enough. Raka. Whereas I think Konami's cool. I think that this version of Konami is quite bad. Yes. Right. Well, you're uh, not like as bad as not as bad as original Oedo Tai Konami. That was. Ooh. You but, really like the weirdly bad versions of Konami. It's, it's okay, crazy. Okay. Uh, she was not that good in TCS. I'm sorry. Like the tag run was fun, but that was about it. Then what? I, man, I don't. I don't get people. I don't get motherfuckers <laughs> who, who feel that way about Konami. Like she just has know. more meat to what she does since she's a heel. It just I don't know. I don't think that's better. true. I feel like she's just. Well, you know what? Never mind. Never mind. I just don't. Don't get it. And more bland. <laughs> Which is hilarious because like baby faces are, are the ones that are meant to be bland most of the time. Like if, if you're a bad baby face, you're bland. Uh yeah. Yeah, I thought this match was really I thought it was not good. Alright, that's fair. Um our next match was a tag, which I skipped. At this um... point, oh wait, oh wait. This match uh was when this was one hour into the show, Zavi said, I'm about to kill one of y'all, because why is this the longest show I've ever seen? Um you know, that's a quote. So so to, to calm all three of us down because it was a bad start to the show, I played Marcus Corvan's theme song. Uh, <laughs> and and we, we had a good time. We jammed out while Natsuko and Tam wouldn't stop fucking talking. <laughs> they talked yeah. for like 10 minutes after the match. 
Okay. Well, I didn't watch it, so I don't. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. Yeah. That's what happened. So we then had in the Red Stars B block, Tomoka Inuma beat Momo Nabe. Yes. Uh, in 12 minutes with the one shot Tomoka kick to move up to three points. Um. Yeah, I thought it was uh it was an interesting really match. Like really. I really liked it. I, I think that like early on, Momo was taking her sweet time to like do anything, and Tomoka's not one to push you to do anything early on. So like that suffered. But I thought like once they like started actually wrestling and going at it, they they did quite well. Um, that, that's another thing about having four hate matches in a row. Every single one of them had a throw into the chair spot. Um, that was the exact same as the one before it. Uh, so that took away from this match. <laughs> and that was just like, oh, we're going to do it again. Cool. Um, yeah, it's Taro Okada is a sick, sick freak for putting four hate matches in a row. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I really like this match, generally. I thought that they really started clicking, um, especially down the stretch. I thought that, uh, you know, Inaba, I thought they just kicked the fuck out of each other. I thought like that when they started doing that, that was really cool. I, I had a good time. So, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I like Tomoka, and I like the Momo as well, and I like what she does. So I think I was just maybe expecting a bit more in between, you know? Yeah, like I said, it it took a while to get going for me, uh, like, for when I, like, to get me fully hooked, because I was like, I know they're going to hook me. I'm just waiting. So please hurry up. And eventually they did. And I was I was happy. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I, mean, I don't see. I feel like maybe I just didn't click with this show because I was very much just not into it on this match. But I don't know. To me, no. This this show was was pretty weak outside the main event. Yeah. All right, that's fair then. Um, uh, that's the second best match of the show uh, because the other matches. Were I can great. see that. Yeah. Um, the, the 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 next match is probably like close to it, but it's like it has obvious problems. <laughs> That's fair. Well, I guess we'll have to get on to those. <laughs> um, Red Stars B. May Sarah and Azumi wrestled to a time limit draw in 15 minutes. So May Having Sarah... Having May Sarah go 30 minutes, day, two yes. days, as high-speed champion. Just, it kind of does a disservice to these two because eventually they were just filling time. And it was yeah. like, okay, these are very good together, but... I don't know. Yeah, I, I think it was way more than the, the Inaba... Uh, May Sarah match a major je- detriment to the the match itself the the time limit um, because it felt like they just had nothing to do which is interesting uh, but not so much they had nothing to do but it felt like they could never leave a certain gear you know what I mean like because they were like we're just gonna have to stay in gear one for the first fourteen minutes and then you know we'll get to gear two for the last minute. And those 14 minutes of year one, while they're, you know, they're both great wrestlers. So obviously it was like good work. Like it was fine work. It felt uninspired and it felt like it was just kind of like going in circles, which is one of my least favorite things to happen in a match is when it feels like it's just nothing's actually happening of substance. Mm. And they're just wrestling around each other, you know, with, with no reason or meaning or anything. Uh, And that's what it kind of felt like at certain points here. Um, They also got, they they got a bit uh campy at certain points. I think that the count out tease was kind of ugh. Um uh that the second high speed encounter was like cool, but like also it was eleven minutes into a fifteen minute draw, so I was like, Why are we doing this right now? Um like it felt like there was no you know, it wasn't them heating back up to like get intense, it was just them doing just running because they had nothing else to do uh mm. so i thought this match was and like th- those are my my complaints about the match i thought the match itself was good like i thought that the work was well done they work well together they they know how to you know counter each other very well and near the end i thought that the closing stretch was very fun too but mm. i thought that like you know this not having a finish and it you know having to go 15 was just really detrimental to the match itself yeah, no, that's fair. I think, like, uh, May Sarah's both times was like, this could have been better if you hadn't gone 15. 
Mm-hmm. But um, this one, I feel like, act like was like this one left way more on the table than the Inaba one. I felt like the yeah. Inaba one, like they 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 did great work that just so happened to end in 15 minutes. This match was a 15 minute draw match that had no other point of existing other than going to a draw. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, I feel yeah. So yeah, I, I was uh, again. I thought this match was still pretty good, especially the, the last few minutes. But it, you know, was a bit disappointing for me. Yeah, no, I got you. Uh, and if you're saying that as the Azami fan, then you know, yeah. it's it's pretty fair. Um, and that gets us on to the main event. Yes. Yes. Uh, Blue Stars B or Red Stars B. My Utani beat Saida in 12 minutes and 41 seconds. With now, a this salt. match, this match was the one that had me fucking yelling. This was oh, in, really? in happy yelling. Yes, okay. I fucking right. loved this match. Uh, it, it was just so fucking sick. Like I don't know. I love a good chop exchange. Uh, and you know, especially from Ida. I think Ida and Zena are like the two wrestlers in the world, pretty much. That like, if they just chop the fuck out of you for a while, I'm happy. Uh, mm-hmm. And man, was it so sick! And Mayu is always like that one upper type of person. So she started throwing chops back, some lucha chops, and they were sick too. Um, yeah, I just fucking love this match. Ida was a beast, and Mayu gave Ida the world. You know, she she really gave Ida every opportunity to kind of you know show up and show out, and while also beating the fuck out of her. Like Mayu also got her licks in plenty. Uh, she was fucking killing her, but. Yeah, I I fucking love this match. Like this match is uh spoil it, this match is like right there with Mayu's main event from the day before. Uh oh, wow. like I I ha- I have them on the same level. It's it, it's pretty much a toss up between which is my favorite of the of the show of the tournament so far. Um just cuz it was so fucking like I don't know, like when Ida is on, she's on and she's usually on. You know what I mean? Like she's usually yeah. <laughs> she's usually showing up. So like yeah, I, I couldn't even take fucking notes. I was just like, this is sick. Everything about this is fucking sick. Eat is a beast. <laughs> those were those were my notes. And I, I loved the match to death. That was tremendous. All right. Well, I didn't quite enjoy it to that level. I thought the Tam match was better. Um, oh, I, I, I disagree. But Ida, Ida and Tam, I thought was better. Um, yeah, no, 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 I know. I don't know why. I think, I don't know. I just wasn't as into this. Um, I did think Ida fair, like chopping the shit out of Mayu was Ida, awesome. I think that is one thing for me is I think watching Ida live is way better than watching her uh, on VOD. Well, I, I feel like Tam just fought back in more cool ways. Like she was just slapping the shit out of Ida, whereas Mayu wasn't. You know, I think that she was, was just she it. chopped the fuck out of her. She was kicking the fuck out of her. She was she was oh, beating the fuck out of her. What are you talking about? I don't know. Tom was slapping the shit out of it. It was it was beast. I don't know, but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's. I thought it was a pretty good match, but just not one of my favorites. That's all. Hmm. Okay. All right. But that was that show. We're on to show number three. Um, this was the Utsunomiya Day Part. Uh, this had five hundred and eight fans, which was a full on sellout. Um, this started with some tags they had rena and hina do a press conference yeah. um, and then we got into starlight kid beating anna j in just under 10 minutes with a black tiger leg destroyer um yeah that was another can solid that match the, can, can, can we call that the the numero dose again please no she's uh, not the, sure maybe the, i guess evil um but yeah, I, I thought Kid targeting the leg was just pretty fine. You know, it was like, hey, you can work a style that's probably familiar to you. And, you know, I thought Anna Jay was fine at selling the leg. See, um, I, I think that was what this match suffered from, is that Anna Jay's a really bad seller. Um, yeah, is, yeah, but, you know, not... she was just put on the back foot to do her stuff, so which is, like, yeah. fine. I think I think this showed that Anna like I showed this showed her limitations more than the uh, I don't know match, which is obvious because uh, not I don't know I don't know match, um, obviously because this is longer and like it had more of a psychology aspect to it, whereas the I don't know match was just them hitting each other and then one of them winning, um, 
So I, I think this one kind of showed a bit of a weaker side of Anna J, but it still wasn't the worst match on the card. So good for her. Like she's 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 cool. Like she's set. The 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 competition she has on each day of these cards, she is set. Because nobody's gonna remember Anna J being bad. Yeah, they're gonna yeah, remember something fair. else. I wouldn't say she was bad either. She just no. I, I I just thought it was generally like kind of mid. You know, I I didn't think she was like bad by any means. Uh, which is a testament to her. Like I'm, I'm happy that she's not doing actively poorly. I think she's doing pretty fine. Uh, but this was definitely weaker than the Surya match, in my opinion. That's fair. That's fair. Well, I mean, Suriano is Suriano. Um, mm-hmm. Our next match then was Suzu Suzuki uh, beating Saki Kashima in just under five minutes in the Blue Stars B Block. Um, Saki Kashima was finished her sponsorship and said, "I am done. Let me go." And uh, that was kind of fun. This Suzu was, was like, minutes? no, you are not escaping. Yeah, it was five minutes. I think it was a little bit too long for what they were going for. See, um, funnily it was enough, kind of funny. somehow, this is currently my favorite match from Blue Stars B. <laughs> really? Yes. It is the only good match in the block so far. That's crazy. In my opinion. That is insane. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if I can dispute it, but sure. Is I mean, really that funny for you? No, I just thought that like Suzu just actually wrestled, and Saki wrestled there for a minute, and yeah, it was funny early yeah. on. Uh, the thing is, is that this match was completely outshined by Zena and Koguma, which was funnier and better worked. Uh, yeah, that's true. So that takes away from it, but also, uh, I don't know if you know, this block's been so fucking ass. It's That's been fair. worse than expected. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, like that. It's it's really not saying much. Like this match was like That's just fair. like I thought it was good. Like I thought it was a solid <laughs> match. Right. And that's by far the best that we've got. <laughs> well, I guess I can't argue there. Uh, speaking of Koguma and Zena, though, they were in a next match. Blue Stars A Block. Um, Zena got the win over Koguma in nine minutes with the Thunderstruck. Um, I thought this was really entertaining. They like went. I loved this match. Um, I, it yeah, like, they went, I think they went from the Kuma stuff to Koguma being like, "Please stop chopping me, man! Please!" To Zena just being a power crazy wrestler. Um, and I thought Zena showed like a really natural, like entertaining side to her that I don't think she had last year. Like her her development oh, overall has been so good. The way she was she's able to ve- just play off Koguma was so she's natural. She's very charming. She is. Which like was this, not she, she a thing at all. She could not have done this year last ago. year. No, like last year all. she didn't have that. And now she's developed that side of her game as well. Like she's such an all rounder these days. Um, because it's it's difficult she's to play. She's one off of the Koguma. beasts of the tournament. Like she's one of the oh, like, sure, yeah, like I said, sure. the Miu match was, you know, it was two minutes, so you can't really like you can't say that's a good match or a great match or anything. But it's like that like what was in that match was a lot of fun. This match was actively one of my like favorite matches of the sh- of the day show. Uh, in fact, it was my favorite match of the day show. <laughs> now that I'm looking at it, the, the day show was not good. Um, so yeah, like you know, like I, I thought that this match was super fun. Um, yeah, I think they worked off each other super well. Koguma, Bump Master General, she's she's a fucking beast. Uh, and you know, Zena was dropping her on her head, dropping her on her neck, and she was chopping the shit out of her. And Koguma was there for it. I, I would have liked. I I am always the one that's like, man, I wish Koguma was still getting that offense that she was a few years ago. But I know mm. that's not really her role anymore. Uh, you know, like the Everest Germans and stuff, like just insane yeah. shit like that. Uh, I think that's probably the one thing that will like be my thing with Koguma this tournament is that it's like, man, I just wish you would like do your really cool shit that you don't really <laughs> have to do anymore. But yeah, well, you should. people don't really realize how hard she carried in the COVID year because this company oh, yeah. was not as stacked. Um, they were reeling from a lot of departures and stuff, and she just came in like a house on fire and completely changed stars. Like they, stars was not doing well when she came along, and she just ripped them up by the neck and brought it back. Like even, what Koguma even, was, was doing one of was the insane. weaker Mayu years it was like twenty twenty one, like in ring. Um, and and yeah, Koguma was really just fucking beasting. Uh, so yeah, I think I think that's uh, one thing that will probably be the the theme for the entire tournament is that it's like, oh, Kogumo was really really good, but I wish she would do more of her like great stuff, you know, her great offensive stuff. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, nevertheless, I match was really fucking good. It's actually funny. I uh, I was on Scott's show last week, and you know, it was like, oh, what's the best match? Like, what are you looking forward to most from from this show? And I was like, probably Zena and Koguma, because it'll probably just be funny and like yeah. an entertaining little match. And I would like to say in in our tournament preview. I had Xena as top three for MVP, so I was Which, yeah, no, firmly uh, locked in. I, I, I don't, I, I didn't disagree with you. I thought that that, you know, I, know, I just, I just like to brag. I like my. I, I think black. you were. I think that that's a that's very um, you know, it's foresight. I, I don't yeah. think I would have immediately called it, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if, especially in her, you know, on the blue side, mm-hmm. Xena could easily be a, a top two, top three of that side of the tournament. Possibly, it's her and Suri. I mean. No, Shuri. It's Shuri, her Shuri, and then like you know, kid. Kid, it, yeah, yeah. is a good one. You know, uh, I don't think anybody down below is having a good. No. Anything. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I think I thought that match was really entertaining. I liked how yes. it went from like step to step, you know, and they kind of changed as the match went on, and then it's it funny. I don't even remember kind of being crazy. Koguma getting chopped that much, but she posted a picture on fucking Twitter, and I was like, holy fuck. Yeah, <laughs> it did. It does not take that much to fuck up a motherfucker's chest. Uh, no, especially them overhand chops. They seem nasty. Yeah, lucha chops. Um, wow, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I guess we have to do it. <laughs> the I next match. What's next. <laughs> yeah, Blue Stars B. Saya Kamatani beats Takla in twelve and a half minutes with the Star Crusher to move up to four points. I think we should get Dave Melser to rate this because I think he could give it minus stars. I think it was mm. that. It was painfully awkward because the crowd was sitting on their hands because Saya was like kind of presented as the baby face even though she gets more heat than the leader of this faction. So the crowd didn't want to root for Saya. And so Tekla being but like, also come the on, only thing... hard, hit me back. It's like, no, they don't want that. They don't like that. The only like thing that. that was good from this match was Saya's baby face comeback. Yes, because she just that's did her the normal only thing. shit. Yeah, that's yeah, uh, yeah. That was but it. The crowd, that was the I entire the redeeming crowd, quality. The crowd being so quiet made it so that all of Saya's like slow, awkward heel movements were just put in slow motion on a spotlight. Like it just made yeah. all of her stuff look worse. And I don't know who greenlit this and who said, "Yeah, go have Saya work babyface," but they need to be fired or like docked pay or something because that was a stupid decision. This was but who's so gonna, Tekla is awkward. is. Size, uh, okay, you know what? I, I, Dave Meltzer has been has been talking about Jake Lee in the in the G one, and mm-hmm. he very famously said, "Evil is bad because his gimmick needs him to be bad." Yeah, Jake Lee's just bad. <laughs> right. Sai Kamatani is bad because this gimmick is bad. Tekla's just bad. <laughs> That's my that's my stance on this. She's, so she's not uh, them, helping her case with this. Them help yeah. them them putting Saikamatani in like well shit I don't know what else like Tekla's not gonna fucking carry this as a baby face like I think that's the problem is that like even though Saikamatani is a I w- I wouldn't even call her a better heel than Tekla like, she's a bad heel but Saikamatani is is currently less liked than Tekla. Mm-hmm. Nobody gives a fuck about Tekla is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> So, like, you exchange, like, confusion and awkwardness for complete apathy. I don't know what, what, I don't know which way you, I would go, personally. Like, would I have yeah. Tekla be the, the, maybe not even, like, babyface, but be the one working from underneath? Well, I think uh, and have, have it be completely like, apathetic? Out. I think you could have them try to, like, out evil each they other. Could just, have they could have just done Ruaka versus... Another. They could have just done Rock and Koguma again. Yeah, like uh, you I, could I just have them be like, that been way better. Throw chairs at one another, like try and cheat as much as they can, like make it so that they're like, yeah, we're comrades, but we, you know, we're going to cheat I and this, I want to win. This makes me very concerned about Risa Sarah versus Tekla. Because uh, that, that's what I was thinking is that it's like, oh, they could just like fucking throw chairs at each other and just be fucking psycho. Which Tekla you know. does. She was in that deathmatch division Ice Ribbon had for a little bit doing hardcore stuff, and it was great. She, um, she can do like, I remember like, that. Blunder. Yeah, like I remember vividly her having some good matches with like Fujita, maybe, and it, Probably, you know yeah. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Just, you're right. Everything about this was just wrong. <laughs> from and the only reason I didn't call it a dud is because I laughed my arse off at 
Saya just growling in Kakla's face on because they were perched up on the corner for no reason. They were do, they were doing the 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 spider suplex spot, but they, they did it terribly. And and, and she oh growled in her face, and then she like cawed at her for a little bit when Tekla got knocked off, and Tekla got up and was like, "No, no, no!" And I'm like, "You're both heels. Like this doesn't work. Like nobody's getting cheers for this. The crowd is not cheering for either." Nobody of you. gives Stop a fuck. <laughs> and so nobody. It was like, just oh really funny. God. I also thought it was funny when Tekla was like, move, bitches, and everybody just sat staring at her. And I was yeah, like, that's and... not that's not ideal. You know, oh man, since since we're we're here, um, I know that we, we have plenty of, to, to talk about. But um... not ready. Oh fuck, what the fuck is this? This is private. Hold on. Um so a, a close personal friend of mine who will remain unnamed. Um oh, tweeted a, a thread on their private of all of the wrestlers they would prefer to be in <laughs> the five star Grand Prix than Tekla. Oh, uh, I've seen this, yeah. <laughs> and I am unfortunately not finding it, which is quite upsetting. But oh, no. I just need y'all to know it was a lot of people. And I agree um, with most of them. Yeah, I, I pretty much all of them. You think you're looking for NAC at NAC, is that it? Potentially. Yeah. Okay, I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. Ariana Grace of NXT. Yeah. Momo Kogo. Camelito, (laughs) the little devil guy from CML. Obviously, I mean. All cops, Saki, which is crazy. Fuck yeah! Hey, she had a she had a good match with Sayaka Matani. You cannot say the same about Tekla. That's (laughs) fine. Tay Honma, which is in 2024, is crazy. But I agree. I still agree. Uh, 2024, Tetsuya Naito. Absolutely. I'm sure. Uh, Dick Togo. Funny guy. Sure. Toru Yano. I would uh, probably laugh at least a little bit, yes. That's true. Sayaka Karara, who should have been Obviously. in anyway. She's a beast. Yes. Uh, the alt account of another random person on Twitter. That we're friends, Great yeah. one. Uh, Juan Cena. Not John Obviously. Cena. Juan Cena. The guy with Ryback. the mask. Ryback. Yes. Ryback. Ryback okay. might be the single person that I was like, eh. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's, it's okay. 100%. That's where I'm at. Right. I don't know, man. It's all Shout out to our unnamed friend. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that match was awful. Probably the worst five star match ever. Like, just See, I thought the Risa Sarah match way. was worse. I thought the Saikam Time Risa Sarah match was worse. No, I don't Not think it was by much. Really as awkward. Like, I just, I feel like they worked around it and all these... that it wasn't. I will say these are two of the worst matches I've seen all year. That's fair. Um, Isn't it crazy that Saiz had two of the worst GP matches ever? Because there's this and there's that draw with Himeka, where they were both green as grass and went 20. Yeah. Or no, that went 19. I my sanity. I think, I think it had to finish, but yeah. It and went super long, and I questioned my sanity. <laughs> like, she had one of the worst Amisori matches uh, yeah. in the five-star that went to a double count out. Oh, God, yeah. Um, she's, she's actually a pretty bad grand... <laughs> like five star wrestler like even her good one was not that great <laughs> like relatively well, let's like, not let's not do too much revisionism on side we were big fans of, of no but stuff. like but i always say that the white belt champions cursed and yes. her her one year that was like really really good which was 2022 you know was was a good year for her but i think the five star had ups and downs for her that year uh 2021 she was still a bit green, but she was good that year too. But yeah, let, let's get on to good wrestlers now. Let's let's yes, get back please. on to good stuff. Uh, Blue Stars A. Suriano beats Suri with a pottering in twelve minutes. Um, again, Suri was just it was insane how just calm she was about beating the shit out of Suriano. Like mm. she was just throwing kicks without a second thought. Like she was just doing it, and you could tell she wasn't even thinking about it. She was just like, "I'm gonna hurt you," and. I think it was interesting to see Soriano work from underneath. Like that's a position she's rarely put in. So it was interesting to see her selling and like you know genuinely in pain from these strikes. Um, I thought the finish was really well done. Like they just went from the Ryu and attempt straight into a potter and and it, it yeah. looked really good. So I thought it was a really really good match, even though they didn't didn't do a whole lot. But it was just like yeah, the dynamic that... at play was just really interesting to see. I think that's my thing is that this match it, it felt a bit hollow. Uh yeah. If you ask me one thing that like actively happened in this match other than the pottering, I don't think I'd be able to tell you. Like it it was well worked. Like it wasn't you know, I, I it's not like oh this was 
you know, bland and I didn't, it was well worked. It's just, I, I can't recall much about it because it, it didn't really like, it didn't heat up. It was just always at like a, a pretty consistent level and then it ended, uh, which is fine. Like I, not every match needs to be uh, like this, like, you know, grand match that goes from a, a certain small place to like this gigantic, you know, bomb throwing match. Uh, but th- this was a pretty even keeled, just like straightforward match, uh, which kind of hurt it. I think that could have heated up more than it did, but I thought that the work itself was, was still quite good. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not complaining. Especially on this card, that I, I didn't think that the card was necessarily that good in and of itself. Yeah, so, no, that's like it, it was. It was good. All right, um, our main event then was Hanan. Oh, also, eating... oh. need to yeah. need to stop some misinformation. So this technically means that Suriano is is one of two people to have a a winning record against Shuri in Stardom. However, of Stardom wrestlers, it does not. Because Soriano has lost to Sherry before in Oz Academy. So, by that metric, sorry, Sherry, Kogman's still on top. All right. Um, For a couple more weeks. <laughs> um, our main event in Blue Stars B, uh, Hanan beat Risa Sarah in 13 and a half minutes with 17. Um, this yeah, weird. this was like a... I, I kind of realized what they were doing eventually. It was uh, hometown hero overcoming yes. Reese Sarah, um, who also hometown got hero like, birthday clocked. girl. Yeah, <laughs> Reese Sarah also got clocked about halfway through the match and had to take a break. So I think this was hurt by being on a hate heavy show because Reese Sarah throwing you into chairs doesn't really work when we've seen that in the last Three five times matches. Already. Yeah. So I think Reese's <laughs> heel performance was fine, and Hanan's babyface performance was fine. Um, but definitely, I feel like you'd expect more of Risa Sarah. But if she was hurt and and got hurt like partway through the match, then that and she did explain it. She did go to the hospital the next day. Um, yeah, she got even Diana more messed match. up with Diana, so she's she's clearly going through something. Yeah, so like I I don't want to like you know shit on it too much. I didn't think that the match itself was even like bad. Like actually yeah. bad. It's just that it was it was messy and it was it was a bit all over the place. I mean, what's a tournament for if not like a hometown hero win on day three? Yeah, <laughs> like you know, no, it's, I agree. It's, it's fine. I, I wish I I do wish the crowd cared more because I was like, Hanan like is very like synonymous with Tochigi, uh, in Stardom. Mm. Like the three sisters are like that's a pretty big deal to them. Uh, but it just kind of didn't have the atmosphere that you would want from that. Uh, but yeah. You know, odd match. Um, all right, August twelfth, twenty twenty four, night part. Uh, also in Tochigi, yeah. uh, was our fourth show. Uh, they had four hundred and ten fans here, so like a hundred people just left and did not come back, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. Um, we went straight into GP action with Natsupoi beating Yunus Amori in eleven and a half minutes with an armbar, and I thought this was really good. This was the show that perked me into life. Um, I watched mm. the show, I watched the day show yesterday, and we we almost didn't record this week because we were both sick yesterday out of the blue. So I watched the show with no energy, or the, the other show with no energy. But I watched this night show today, so maybe I'm just a bit nicer to it. But I really enjoyed this. Uh, Nat's Poi was just really good at like throwing the forearms and making Unimon fight back. And of course, Unimon's Mori is a great at fighting back. So I thought they really played into that really well, and I thought Nat's boy just did good at what she does, and you know the the forearms had a lot of oomph to them, and there was a lot of fire and a lot of energy in the match, and you know for an opener, I think they brought the right kind of energy. Yeah, that was a, a good little match. Um, Nat's boy's still really trying to get the arm bar over and the limb targeting over since uh, Mina's not here. Somebody has to randomly incorporate that into their move set. Uh, which I I still don't know if I necessarily like. Uh, I felt like I felt like that was kind of the weakest parts of this match was not the point being like, and then I grab your arm. Um, I think that works for some people. I don't know if it worked for not the point. But then again, I said this mm-hmm. about Mina once upon a time, and she ended up being a really good technician. So uh, for for a while at least. Uh, so you know, I don't. I'm not going to say, like, oh, it's bad, stop. But, like, you know, it, it's an interesting thing to, like, kind of develop here for Natsupoi. Uh And, yeah, Unimon did well as well. Um, 
I'm liking you so far. She's, right. uh, you know, not she's consistent, not uh, on like a high level consistency like Momo's been, but she's she's consistent enough to where it's like when I watch her match, I usually am cool with it and I like it. Mm. All right, that's fair. Um, our next match was in the Blue Stars B block. Azumi and Tomoko Inaba wrestled to a double count out in just under 13 minutes. Um, I thought this was a good match again. Um, you know, they're both good wrestlers, but the finish was just so ridiculous. They just stood outside yeah. wrestling mm-hmm. and just forgot, I guess, that you have to get they back a, in the ring. They hit a... Did Azumi hit a Canadian destroyer and then a double kick? Like, was that... He, I don't know if they did a destroyer, but they did the double kick. But the double kick happened she, after 20 anyway, so they just did it yes, just to do it. She, she, no, I th- she did do a Canadian destroyer at some point, and it still did nothing, even though that's like her big move. Yeah. This was very frustrating because, like I said, the, the Suzu and Hana match was like kind of trying to figure itself out um, until, you know, they did and then it ended. And it was a shame. This match knew exactly what it was. And it, it it had every it had the makings of being a great match. Like if it didn't end the way it did, mm-hmm. in my opinion, like I thought they they meshed super well. I, I think they have a great singles match like in them against each other. Uh, better like I think that like the first you know twelve minutes of this was better than I even expected because I was like maybe they won't like mix super well or you know they'll kind of step on each other's toes yeah. in a certain way. I thought they fucking worked beautifully together. Um, but then the double count out was fucking ridiculous. Mm. Two double counts in three days. And this yeah. one was very uh, pokey. You know, like it, it just was. So, mm. yeah, that, that frustrated me because I did really love this match up until that point. Uh, but I kind of had to take, I had to take, uh, take points away because I was like, that was, that was pretty abysmal. <laughs> yeah, no, I get you. That's fair. You know, I I feel like I think the same things. I thought they were doing good stuff, and then finish just takes it down because it's hard mm-hmm. to, I don't know, it's just hard to suspend your disbelief when they're just standing there. Like, yeah, you know, you 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 hear the referee count. We all hear the referee count. You know, you have to get in the ring, and it just feels like a real what? cop out for no reason. Why? Why was this? a ring out draw and Minami Ruaka was the time limit draw. Why wouldn't you oh, swap the know. two? Yeah. If they were both going to end too. in draws, what like, actually that's, that's, that's a point I need to touch on very quickly about oh, this yeah. in general. <laughs> Suzu and, and Hanan and Azumi and Tomoka go to ring out draws. Mm-hmm. Ruaka goes to a time limit draw. Yeah. May Sarah, the high speed champion whose title matches literally can't go past 15 minutes, can't win in 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> like, if you're going to have a shit ton of draws, these are like the strangest people to do the individual draws with. Like, this match going to 15 would have made sense, mm-hmm. truthfully. Like, the way they were wrestling, it would have made perfect sense. But May Sarah and Azumi going to a time of a draw made less sense. Ruaka and Manami, like, like I just don't get what we're doing. <laughs> I have questions as well because they all result in one point anyway. Like, if you, yeah. if it, like, there's no difference. No, I get you. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. We're back to hate, though. You know, we're back to hate. <laughs> uh, Red stars a another Konami. show with four hate matches in a row. By the way, they don't space them yeah. at all. Uh, Konami beat Hazuki in nine and a half minutes with a knee kick. Woo. Record. Um, they're both on four points now. And I liked this because Hazuki too. was intense. And I forgot mm-hmm. that Konami cheated to take the belts off of Hazuki. So she was oh, and pissed was, off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She was the and, one person uh, that was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I thought they did the heel stuff pretty well in this. You know, I thought, you know, they, they pulled the referee out and Hazuki couldn't get the win. So she got the visual fall, but then you know, she fell to the other tactics. And, you know, it's it's the heel stuff we live with now in stardom. But, you know, I thought they worked around it pretty well by just having this Hazuki was... come out like a house on fire. See, like, this might have been Konami's first good singles match this year. 
Maybe. I'm not gonna lie. Maybe. Oh, I think she had a Rana match. That was good. Yeah. Like you know, in God's eye. But yeah. definitely the first good uh, heel Konami match I've seen. Uh, singles match at least. Uh, I love that she did well here, and I think Hazuki is great. I think she did a really good job of you know with the uh, just selling it as a heated match. I guess you know I think that mm. she did really well there. Um, unfortunately, Konami forcibly put blackface on her. Um, yeah, the black spray paint thing is not fun. It doesn't look. And Konami good. said after the match, "I think you look better with a black face." Mwahaha. I was like, okay, that's <laughs> yeah. an interesting thing to say. Um, I don't, I don't really get it though. I, I mean, just maybe, like, maybe this is, is all leader to hyper hiding hyper missile joining. Uh, oh hate. my god! Come on. I don't know. Maybe it's just <laughs> right. thought. Just, okay. just spitballing here. Just being a little silly here. Um. Yeah, but I thought this match was good. Mm, it was good. Yeah. Like I thought it was. Manu it was, was one of the few. Has this was the very good. This was a good heel match. Yeah. The first, probably the first good heel match, like I, actively I good heel that, match. I think hate with. can have these. They just can't do it as much in singles matches. It works better when they do the three on threes and stuff. Yeah, but but I think it's similar with House of Torture. Um, because House of yeah. Torture is like really fun when it's like four on four. Uh. They they get a little bit less fun, um, outside of certain circumstances when it is singles. So like, and I like House Torture more than other people. I think if they can kind mm-hmm. of like try to get the like comedic aspects of House Torture and just kind of like the the uh, there are certain things they just don't have yet that House Torture does, and it took House Torture years. And they may to get. never have. Yes, they probably will never have. To be because this fe- um, this this group feels more like a dump thing than the house torture thing like they're fully going dump because i didn't want to didn't, we didn't good. get to talk about it but the the torah tam angle was literally a nagayo dump straight. thing like yeah yeah like which that is i don't exactly what like doing. because and we we had this conversation i think dump matsumoto for as great as she was kind of she set the bar at Thank a certain you. place Yes, very high, but also because. in a very specific... You need to do it so specifically, and so many yeah. things need to work for mm-hmm. the Atrocious Alliance to be great, and yes. it's never it's never been replicated, even remotely. You know? Like, that's why Zaps didn't work. That's why, that's why like, a lot of uh, heel Joshi factions don't really work if they try to be, like, dump. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, it just doesn't, because... It's just a completely different, different era, different level of wrestlers, different vibe, different everything. Uh, so I, I kind of resent Dump's influence on modern heels and Joshi because it gets very frustrating. Because it's just like I could just watch better matches from thirty years ago, forty mm. years ago. I, I, I can see this. them really continuing with this so long as Dump is in the headlines, though. Because I don't know how big that Netflix show is in Japan, but like she's getting a Netflix show, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, next month. And maybe, you know, they're hoping people will go, oh, what's this stardom thing? <laughs> you know, I don't know. Yeah. But I could see them really sticking with the, the Dump Dump was at the Marvelous show the other day. Did yeah, that? That, that makes sense. Yeah, she's she was in the crowd. They like got got a close up of her. She was like, I <laughs> like no 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 paint, no nothing, just kind of like in her in her hoodie, just like hi. <laughs> Dump Dump is really funny because she seems like the sweetest woman ever. Like every oh, time 100%. you see her out of character, she's she just smiling, like, like yeah. just loves life, like it's crazy. Which um, like historically, like she was like one of the nicer people in the dojo at that time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, like notoriously, they were like, "Why aren't you bullying these children?" She was like, "Why would I do that?" <laughs> and do not yeah yeah um but we should we should move on because we have yes. lots to do um i'll let you take the lead for this one red stars b may sarah beats mom what now they in 10 and a half minutes with the shooting star how would you like man that? may sarah keeps proving even me wrong she proves you more wrong more um but she keeps proving even me wrong because i'm just like oh you know i i think her and smoke will be a lot of fun i just hope that they don't do too much tech or stuff i don't think it'd be good they did tech or stuff and it was one of my favorite matches of the tournament I was like, oh, Momo and May seems like a match that just is not going to have any chemistry. They're going to have to overcome that. They had tremendous chemistry. <laughs> like, they clicked, and it was really, really good. Um, I would say it's on par with, like, most of Momo's other matches to this point. Um, it's better than the Smoke match, I would say, and and probably I'd, I'd have it on level with the Azumi match uh, for Momo, because I, I thought this was really fucking good. It was super well worked. Um, 
I thought that like May selling is really showing up for for this tournament. I think that's a huge aspect of it. Um, is just that May is such a great seller, and Momo, you know, is is somebody that's going to attack you. She's going to really beat the fuck out of you if she can. Um, and I thought that was super well done there. And yeah, I, I was wondering why they didn't do the classic Azumi Momo spot in Azumi vs Momo, where uh, you know Momo anti airs her, but it's because they want to do a arguably cooler, uh, more nasty version in this match. So Azumi let her scrap that for this one. Um, so I thought that was really cool. Shout out to Azumi for for giving you know one of her best spots to May to do against Momo. Um, but yeah, I never should have doubted them. This was super good. I loved that May like like did the whole high speed thing and then <laughs> made Momo shake her hand. I thought that was very funny. Like she like did all of the turnarounds and shit, and then she's like, and now I shake your hand. And Momo's like, you better stop. You you better back the fuck up, motherfucker. I thought that was a funny little little thing there that I appreciated. And yeah, I thought the match was really, really good. They, I should never doubt them. That's, that's my point. They had great chemistry together. Yeah. I think, you know, Momo found another Azumi type to work with here. Cause she just yeah, that, that's, really that's enjoys what I was it. Saying, where it's like, Azumi even gave the most like quintessential Azumi, uh, Momo spot to May. Yeah. Uh, she didn't do it. And the, the anti-air, right. Um, mm-hmm. cause you, yeah. So great. yeah, I, I think that like, yeah, Azumi, Momo's found another Azumi type to kill it against. I agree. Yeah, Momo, you know, I, I was on the Momo train all year. I think she's great, and she was great. She's been great in this tournament, really. And I think uh, she always shows we up. Don't remember tournament. how good she is. She always shows up for the tournament. I will say, uh, perhaps the earliest essential elimination in five star history. First weekend, yeah, she is yeah, that's crazy. Pretty much incapable of making it. To I the thought finals. she was a shoe in for the quarterfinals because yes, right. I expected her and Micah to happen because that's just a rematch that you can do in Shinjuku face, but I guess not. Um, after that, I, anyway, I, I think. I do you want to do more? Yeah, just just briefly about Momo's uh, yeah. tournament. She basically needs like the entire everybody to lose or draw, like everything yeah <laughs> like it's it's very it's not possible for her and tam to go through so it's pretty much not possible for her to go through because if somebody's going through it's gonna be tam over momo um but yeah so that's wild i did not expect her to be out so quick i didn't expect her to be yeah. out at all i thought she was gonna make it to the you know at, at the least to like final like, day we were all doing predictions for this tournament without realizing Taro Okada is a freak. <laughs> we have yeah, no you know, that's what I'm thinking about with, the, guy with the math. I was like, is he just trying to like be quirky and different by putting in no, like, you know, half so draws crazy. so that it's like really weird math that's hard to figure out? Mm. Uh because with the like with most uh block tournaments like this, you can usually like calculate it's like, okay, there'll be a draw here or there that'll kind of mess up my math, but otherwise this is how it will work. There have been more draws in the first three days than there like ever have been. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I, I think yeah. maybe maybe 2022, 2022 has a beat because there was like 150 matches or something like that. But like like really there like effectively like in that tournament though I'm pretty sure they didn't do any because that yeah, was the I'm... year people want expected loads because Rossi had done oh draws yeah all year and then he didn't do any in the tournament. So yeah, I, like what it, is wrong with this guy? It's likely that we are already at like the most draws in like a decade, <laughs> maybe. 2020 was weird though because oh like, fuck yeah okay i remember utami yeah. drew into the final or something didn't she yeah there, there were draws they did there loads were, and they year. were 20 minute draws so those were rough yeah that was but, that was when we started our show we started the roughest time possible and it's funny because like we did we barely covered the five star like we started it yeah. but then we were like this there's too much shows and there's it's too much i don't want to do this yeah so we're we like this i just skipped over it yeah um and by day two yeah. we knew Tommy was winning it like made yes. it really obvious. Um, yeah, our next match: Red Stars A. Speaking of draws. Manami and Rocco wrestled to a 15-minute time limit draw. Now, I just did point out that Manami's first exhibition match as a trainee was somehow against Rocco, so they were probably playing up that history between the two of them. But why? This, all... this is just self sabotage because Rocco is like purposes. motivated and trying, and they have just given her the yeah. worst possible matches that's, to start that's with. That's what I was gonna say. This was this should have been worse. 
Yeah. Like, no, like for 15 minutes, it should have really been fun. worse. Like, yeah, the, I thought they, I thought they had was, some good stuff. It was good, yeah. But it they just, just didn't have the substance. Like, they, yeah, like, I don't know. You you need somebody with, like, a, a deep move set that, like, has good match flow to go 15. I think Manami yeah. has, you know, a, a her move set's still basic, but she has enough. And, you know, I think her match flow is good enough. But, like, putting Ruaka in a 15 minute, like, she. She hasn't had a singles match in like outside of the Cinderella, which I'll go like fucking six minutes. Yeah, hasn't had a singles match in years, pretty much. You know, like you can count on on one hand how many times she's left ten minutes in the singles, mm. and you ever go fifteen against Minami in fucking Tochi. Like what? What? Why? <laughs> mm. Just complete self sabotage, which they've yeah. done a lot. I feel like they did that with Saya too. Not to go back to Saya, but. You have this like fresh new heel, uh, Risa Sarah, and then Tekla to start with, and it's like, what is she meant to do? You know, like Saya should have mm-hmm. started this tournament murdering somebody. Like she should have beat the shit out of Rana or something, just to just, really well, get herself to established. <laughs> but instead, they said, no, you're gonna wrestle Risa Sarah, who is also a heel, is a veteran and won't give you much, and half asses most tournaments she's in to because be fair, she wrestles yeah. a lot. And then yeah. Tekla, who's in your group, <laughs> so I do think that Ami. Heel. I think Ami was a good first pick because Ami was yeah. always like, she's a fucking asshole. Have you met her? <laughs> like, like she's mm-hmm. she's a dick. Don't you guys realize this? And then like she turns heel, and so Ami would have been a perfect like. I yeah. told you all, she's Ami an was, asshole. Somehow you were right that Ami's story was like perfect for what they were probably trying to do with this tournament, and yeah. then she got taken out, and so it's ruined a lot of their flow. Because I think she was probably a an easy sit quarter finalist as well. Or Maybe at least somebody that like would get close or something. Yeah. yeah, and she's like somebody you can have lose to a Siri or something in in one of the quarterfinals. But we'll get there when we get there. Uh, our next match was Tam Nakano losing to Sai Ida in thirteen oh, yeah. minutes and fifty two seconds when Ida got the Ida Bashi. Uh, this was great. I thought this was very, fantastic. Very Tam was just ready to put Ida through her paces, you know, slapping the shit out of her. Ida was eating them. And then Ida was, like, going for these, like, sweeping clubs to the knee that were awesome. Like, they yeah, looked the, really the good. Blocks. Yeah. They were fantastic. And I just thought the way Ida was able to, like, power up and then power through Tam was really great babyface stuff. Like, I was just rooting for Ta- Ida to win like crazy. Um and I thought Tam's performance was really good. I think she's had a really good tournament so far. If she's ha- she's having that I am winning run, like a, yeah. that I'm winning, so I'm stunting on everybody. That's how Tam has been so far. You want to know what's crazy? What? I have my match guide. Uh, the first, the top six, uh, in my match guide of like wrestlers of the tournament are red are all of Red Stars B except for Azumi. Wow. And then tied for seventh is Shuri and Azumi. So, yeah, Red Stars B is just, like, nobody's even close. <laughs> no. <laughs> Beyond that. Crazy. Um, yeah, I just, I loved everything about this. This match made me really go, you know what, Saida has all of it. Like, she mm-hmm. just, get this promotion focused on her now. <laughs> like, she's just so much energy and passion. And when people talk about strong style, they usually mean shit, shit wrestling. But she is that pure definition she, of strong style. Strong I am going style, to get yeah. beat and I'm going to power my way through because that is what I do. And it's, it's just fantastic. And I thought it was really on display here against Tam. Uh, yeah, this was just fantastic. One of the best matches of the tournament, I would say. See, I, I am not as high on it as some others are, but I thought this match was tremendous. I thought it was very, very good. Um, like it's not, it's not in my top five. Um, it probably, yeah, it falls like right out my top five. Um, wow. But I thought it was really, really good. Uh, up there with, with some of the better matches of the tournament, for sure. Um, I, I did think some parts, uh, like, earlier on, it, it felt like they were kind of a bit plotting until it got to, like, the cool shit. Uh, which, the cool shit came every every couple minutes, so it wasn't like it was any sustainable amounts of time where I was, like, where I wasn't interested. I was interested all the way through. Um, I also think I would have been way more into this if I watched it live, because I knew Ida had beat Tam. Uh, yeah. And I think, like, if I didn't, I would probably be ripping my shirt off when I watched it. Uh, <laughs> That's fair. So, in that in that 
you know, that respect, I think that I self I sabotaged that this match to be a little bit worse in my mind than it actually could have been, if that makes sense. Um, I, I to be fair, I always say it. Sai Eden and Hazuki are two wrestlers that you just need to watch live, mm. just because that's how their matches flow. And you could tell that Hazuki kind of taught the, and even Hanan to some degree. I think Stars in general is is very like you want to watch them live, uh, because you never really know what's coming next, and it could be it's very exciting to see them win. So. I, I think that is part of it, but I, I really liked the match in general. I thought that Ida did a great job. I I almost wish she did a little bit more limb work throughout the match because I thought that the chop locks were perfect. Like I think yeah. that's such a like because like that's exactly what Ida would do. Like that makes sense. It's just throw her body at your at your leg. Um, but I feel like they started that a bit late. I would have liked it if if that was like kind of a bit more of Ida's game plan and it was a bit more of a through line throughout the match. Um, but yeah, great match. I thought it was really, really good. All right. Um, that was that show then. Uh, as of now, top three matches of the tournament. Uh, Dylan, what's your number one? My number one, I am going to stick by Tam versus Mayu from day one. Um, right, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just, it's Tam Mayu. Yeah, no, my, mine, is, mine is also Tam Mayu. <laughs> uh, so that's fair. Uh, my second also has Tam. It is Tam and Saida. I would put that second, just about. See, um, probably recency bias though, because my I, second. I think it's like right around. Well, this is all recent. It's been the past fucking, like what? Yeah, that's six true. hours. Um, mm-hmm. something like that. Uh, my second is also has Mayu in it. It's Saida and Mayu. Um, I fucking. I, we I both have Ida and number yes. two. Yes. Yes. I mean, Ida's Ida. It's Ida, Mayu, and Tam are the top three in in Mayu. Yeah thing right now and two of them have only had two match. all of them have only had two matches that's it yes. wait what the fuck <laughs> these motherfuckers are fucking killing them <laughs> oh my god what's your third or do you do you have a clear third or is it just like a mishmash of stuff? uh it's it's between shuri and starlight kid and mesa and tomoki inaba um yeah I'm, I'm kind of you know i'm i'm back and forth because like at first i was like oh shuri and kid uh, but then, like I said, I've just kept thinking about Mesa and Tomoki Inaba, uh, just because I was like, man, it was just so well done. So I kind of like have that a bit higher right now. Mm-hmm. But like on the day, it was Shuri and Starlight Kid over Mesa and Tomoki Inaba. But now I'm kind of like, shit, maybe. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think I have a clear three either, just because like Azumi and Momo was also really that's great. That's my five. That's, uh, that's my five. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, that was great. Kid and Siri was great. Uh, Tomoka and May was great. Like they're all very similar levels there. So it's just kind of a pick one, basically. So yeah, that's that's probably where I stand with top three. Um, so we're, we're pretty we're pretty similar in our yeah. Uh, I think we we just swapped out which uh, Mayu or Tam we prefer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to preview all four shows. We've been going for a while, like, and we have to get Marigold in. Is there a point in previewing this these tournament matches? Because we have no clue. I, mean, I have no read on what this guy is gonna do. This tower. Oh no, I think we could. I think we could run through it. Uh, okay. We all should right. at least do the well, Korokin. Beyond yeah. That, all right. Yeah. So there's a Korokin here on the fifteenth, which is a Thursday. Um, the there is undercard stuff, but you know it's that is what it is. Our block action kicks off with Red Stars A Manami versus Unimiz and Mori. That's the one I'm very into. Very looking forward yeah, to Yeah, I like that. Uh either one can win. Uh, please yeah. don't be a draw. That's my that's my take there. Yes. Um Red Stars A again, Natspoy versus Ruaka. Um I think that's probably a Natspoy win. I don't think they don't even have that blocks. Upset. Like that's that's what makes it hard. They don't have a table on this, so it's like... I have a table. Isn't that crazy? It's almost like I've made a table for, you for did. I don't have it up though. It's you know I don't that's your problem. And pull it up. <laughs> well I don't know. Natsupoi can probably beat Ruaka. Everybody can beat Ruaka. That's yeah. Yeah, uh, Ruaka would move her up to six, and it would eliminate Ruaka from okay. from the tournament. Okay, Ruaka probably wins then. Yeah, Ruaka's winning. No, I, I think I think now is the time that she. Gets nah, it's Karkin. She's cheating. She, she's gonna cheat. Okay, yeah, I think actually lose. that's a good point. Ruaka either cheats or gets DQ. I think probably. Yeah. Um, Red Stars A again, Micah versus Konami, and I probably have Konami. Um, 
just to like set up something down the line. Yeah, Mike needs Mike to take some losses. All of hate, then I think that just renders them useless already. Mike needs to take some losses, and I feel yeah. like one to Konami is very understandable. And Konami um, probably goes through at this stage. I think she's a very likely quarter finalist. I would obviously prefer Hazuki, but yeah, I think Konami. Yeah. Konami is the one I, I expect to go through in the first place. So all right, that's fair. Konami over Mike probably. Uh, we have. In the B side, we have Tam Nakano versus Azumi. Tam has to win here. She has to start getting points on the board. Yeah, Tam can't lose from here. Pretty yeah, much. so she's she's going to beat Azumi there. Um, Red Stars B, uh, Saeed versus Tomoka Inaba. Mm. Inaba? Is Inaba on three now? Or is it two? Inaba's on four. Amazon four, okay. She got the moment win. So, oh yeah, that's that's the other part of this. Uh, if anybody, um, of Azumi Mesera or Tomoki Inaba win another match, Momo is officially out. Right. Uh, okay. So Inaba probably to doesn't pro- win then. If you want to prolong Momo's life in the game, then yeah, yeah Inaba Inaba would lose here. But also, I don't think they care. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um. B B block again. Uh, Mayu Utani versus Momo. Uh, I can't believe I'm going for a hate clean sweep there, but yeah, Momo has to win to stay in. Um, all right. Blue side then we have Blue Stars A. Siriano versus Starlight Kid. Um, hmm. Ano has two points. Kid has none. Oh no, Kid has two Just as two. well. They'll uh, probably draw. Probably wins here. Yeah, that might be a draw. Ooh, that might be yeah, a draw of the night. Um. They haven't Blue shown yet in, in Blue A, so... Yeah, and I think these two are like white belt contenders who would go to a draw, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I actually wouldn't be upset with that as a draw. All right. Makes sense. Um, Blue Stars A again, Koguma versus Miyu Amasaki. Probably Koguma got her on the board. Since Miyu got the win over Xena, yeah, I think I think Koguma Yeah. Because initially I was like, oh, well, that's an easy upset for Miyu is over Koguma, but since... Yeah, since Koguma's the only person without points, I would I would get her on the board. Um, we have Siri versus Anna J. Oh, Siri sure, is on. That. Siri on. Siri's on Siri's two. On two. Mm. One on one. Yeah, Siri should win that one. Siri should win that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I think it's safe. B side of the block then, Rani Agami versus Tekla. That's probably Tekla getting a win. Yep. First one. Um, first one. Hanan versus Saki Kashima. Uh, Saki probably um, gets Not the there. there. Hanan's riding think, a bit too high. Hanan's only got three. I think I think Hanan needs one more win and then she could pretty much lose out. <laughs> uh. That's fair. Um... And then Suzu versus sure. Risa Sarah. Um, you probably have Suzu win. I think she's... Suzu should win, yes. Yeah. She's on three, is she? Suzu right now is on or three. Or one. Yeah. Oh, three. She's okay, on... yeah. You have... Well, is Risa, Risa Sarah's on zero, isn't she? Correct. She's Owen. Owen so Risa Sarah should win from like a, a block perspective, but from a story perspective, Suzu's probably win. No, nah, Risa Sarah probably wins because she is the veteran, I guess, of the two. I think Suzu still. That might be has a draw. Kind of tie. Yeah, maybe. They, they I, ju- I just think Risa draws. wins. I, I think Sarah wins. I'm not opposed with Risa Sarah winning, to be fair. Yeah. I think, All right. I think ha- letting her win the one match that she's definitely going to try in definitely might be a bit of a stretch. Yeah. She's probably going to try in. I think that's fair. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know. Do you want to go through the other three shows or is your yeah, mind. We could do it real quick. We, yeah. We could, okay. We could do it. Uh, 17th of August, Kyoto KBS Hall. So we do know one of these. Um, Siriano versus Miyo Amasaki in Blue Stars A. That is a Kevin win. This is her home region. They're both from around there, but yeah, I think Kevin should win yeah. there. Kevin upset. Uh, Blue Stars A, Starlight Kid versus Koguma. We had Kid winning yesterday, didn't we? Or the, whatever the Karkin is. I think Kid wins here. Uh, oh, I thought Koguma won, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Well, uh, you know, a, a kid win over. Wait, was Kid on the 
who was she facing? Oh, no, it was a draw against Ano. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So Koguma probably That's wins. Kind of Otherwise, Kid is I've... gonna rage ahead. No, Kid would just get to five. I think Kid at five is fine. Oh. Okay. Especially because she still has Miyu Amasaki, which is upset potential. Um, um. Okay. And we gotta look at it. We're, we're all, we only have a couple more matches. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so I'm still getting used like, to the six six match yeah. blocks because I'm like, oh, there's no stories to play out. You just gotta win. Okay. I don't know. I'm I'm going Koguma though. Going Koguma. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Blue Stars are A, Xena versus Anna J. I think Anna probably wins there. I think she's going to have a respectable points total by the end of it. She might even be around qualification, so she probably picks up more points here. Yeah, I could see it. Yeah. Uh, fuck, is Anna J going to beat Shuri? <laughs> Maybe. Possibly. You want, no, I think I think she gets to six points, then loses to Koguma final day. There could be a world where Anna J is in a core final, no, just to fill a slot, but I don't know. Um, Blue Stars B, we have Saya Kamatani versus Rani Yagami. This is interesting, because Saya is unbeaten so far, so are they going to do the big upset, or is she going to run the block, do you think? She probably runs the block. Are they going all until... in on Saya? I think Saya Kashima beats her uh, in Osaka on the 20th. Mm. Um, okay. But I so don't she, think she... she beats Rana here. Yeah, I, I think. All right. I think her two losses are probably going to come to Suzu and to Saki. Uh, otherwise, I think she runs it. Okay, that's fair. Uh, Hanan versus Tekla. Uh, Hanan Tek... who should win. Hanan probably wins because I had her losing at the other one, so she needs to pick up some points. Although yeah, I, I don't know if Tekla should lose that much. She's tag champ, so I don't know. Well, could, well, three, I mean, this could so set up a, this could set up a title match. This could set up a title yeah. match. Well, I think May beating Momo sets one up already. To some degree. Yeah. Well, like, who would, oh, two. Hanan. Yeah, Hanan and Nita, I guess. But maybe. I don't know. Um, and then we have Risa Sarah versus Saki Kashima. And I think Risa Sarah wins that one. Just to yeah. boost her points total. Okay. She needs it. Um, be back in two seconds. I just have to do something. Okay. All right. Our next show to preview is uh, 18th of August, five star GP in Kobe. Um, we have a Red Stars A block, Micah versus Rocka. Uh, Micah wins, especially if she loses to Konami. She does get, you know, one over on hate. So, yeah. 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 Uh, in the A block again, Hazuki versus Unim is Mori. That's is upset this... potential. Yeah, I was thinking upset potential because Hazuki has a decent points total. So and she could do it. Hazuki is. Oh yeah, yeah she could. Yeah. Okay. She could lose. Um, yeah. Another A block match. This is an interesting one. Natsupoi versus Konami. So I don't think Natsupoi has many points yet. Um, right now, Natsupoi has two points. Yeah, and I, she did, will have, did we have four a winning her by Ruaka. Right. I wonder if Konami wins to set up a white belt match because Konami is prime white belt loser. Yeah. For for in Stardom Canon, so and I think that leading up to the problem Tor is, is that you kind of, you kind of makes a lot of want sense. Minami to like it. Micah beating Natsuki kind of makes things difficult. Um, yeah. Because she because like who of Hazuki, Konami, and Minami beats Natsuki? Now, uh, oh, Konami is the question, but I feel like if you're doing Tam and Tora, then you can do Konami and that's boy, it's like part of that, yeah. No, but I mean, yeah, no, I think Konami's winning, but it, my point is is that like you have Minami and Sendai, uh, with not boy, and you have Hazuki on the last day, so well, it's Natsupoi like those boy wins on the last day, it's Hazuki, yes, yeah. I don't know. It depends on how our to point total plays yeah, out. Yeah, I don't know. Um, on the B stars or B block <laughs> side of red, it's man. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Mayu Iwatani versus Azami. I think Azami wins because Mayu. I don't have Mayu going through, so she needs to start dropping points. Well, who do you have going through? I don't know. <laughs> it was Tam and Momo, but now it. And now it's got to be either Tam and Mayu or maybe they're going in on Ida a little bit. Tam and Ida, like Tam and Ida would be really cool. I'm Tam and Ida, or even like 
well, not Tam and Inaba. Although Inaba could. I don't know who she'd face in the next round. Well, it would be Kanani, wouldn't it? I could see Tam and Inaba. Oh, but yeah. I think I think Mayu. I, I oh, you like could Mayu run back just... Micah and Ta or Micah and Inaba. That'd be fun. Yeah, but having Inaba lose twice kind of sucks. In in a month yeah, and a half or whatever. She's, you know, she's in the JTO. She's fine. They won't be hurt. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Maybe I just I just think they'll do a lot of rematches for those quarterfinals, but maybe not. Um, but yeah, Azumi I have over Mayu. Um, we have Tam versus Momo in essentially an eliminator. Um, no, if going. If, if, if Azumi beats Mayu, then Momo's already out. Oh, okay. So yeah, Tam is going to win and just double the pain. Yeah. yeah. All right. Because uh, then... like I said, if if anybody if anybody from the lower half of the tournament wins another match, mm. it's Momo's crazy. out. All right. Except for um, Ida, technically. Speaking of Ida, it's her and May Sarah. So I'm actually I would have quite excited May... for that match. Wait, we haven't factored in the draw yet, so maybe that's a double count out or something. Yeah, that is what I'm kind of fearing, is that they're going to have Ida join the spin cycle of draws at the bottom of the block. Um, yeah, you know, they probably do, because somebody probably gets through on, like, a one-point advantage. So there's probably a bunch of people who get, like, odd numbers. So, yeah, I would have Ida draw there. Yeah. All right. I think um, you over me. I'm not going to lie. I think that's my take. Of course, of course. Um... 20th of August, then, starting in Osaka. Um, this is this day next week, which we'll probably have to record after. So we have a Blue Stars A match. Xena versus Sioriano. I have Xena. I could see Xena. Yeah. But that, um, Sioriano's kind of rough in it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. She can pick up some later. She would get a draw Maybe. there. Uh, she'd have a loss there. Yeah, I think I think she needs to win that. But so does Xena. She also has very few points. Yeah, but Xena has oh she has a Shuri match. Well, she uh, might beat yeah. Siri. Oh, okay. But well, I have Xena there anyway. Um okay. speaking of Siri, oh, okay. we have Siri versus Koguma. Um that might be a double count out of some sorts. They're gonna do some Kuma shtick. We, oh man, that'd be They're so They're gonna great. draw. Yeah. That'd be so great. Um Anna J versus fly. Miyu Amasaki. Mm. Miyu. No, that's Anna. Anna, you think? Mm. Okay. She moves up to six. Uh, on the B side, then, Suzuki versus Tekla. I already have Tekla here because she's probably lost a little bit too much and may already beat Momo, so you don't need another tag champion losing there. Uh, you do. I think if you're, if you're running the tag match, you do. But... Yeah, but Suzu doesn't. Suzu would have too many points, I think, by then. Does it matter? Yes, it does. I don't. She's probably not going through. What do you I mean? Don't have who, her like, through. I don't know who goes through if not Suzu and Zion. Well, what the if they do Risa Sarah and Siri again? What if they're doing Risa? That would be Siri? fun. But yeah. Risa Sarah so Risa is Sarah like already Zaya effectively eliminated if she loses. To unless she's beating Suzu. That's what I said. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, I, I right. still think Suzu's going through, but it doesn't matter. This box sucks. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, Asaya Kamatani versus Saki Kashi. Saki, Saki so upset. Um, and then Blue Stars B final match. Uh, Rani Agami versus Teresa Sarah, and that is Teresa Sarah. Sarah. Woo! Yay! We'll pre we'll review some of that next week. Um, so, yeah. maybe. I might not be here depending on what day we have to record because, you know, I, I'm not available on Wednesdays. So, you know, we would have to do Tuesday because we can't do Thursday because there's a show on Friday. So, you know, great. Woo. Um, that's stardom. On to the fun stuff. Marigold <laughs> is here. Um, they have been announced as part of the f no. Oh, my God. I messed that up. The N1 final show at Edion Osaka Arena on September 1st. It is the Marigold team of Kazuna Tanaka, Bozilla, Miko Ayono, and Koki Amare taking on Miyuki Takase, Sandra Moon, Takumi Aroha, and the great Sakuya. So this is basically, I think, going to lead into Monday Magic, where we're going to do yeah. the Noah core versus Marigold again. Um, Sandra Moon might take the loss there because she's just visiting, I, I would mm -hmm. assume. Um, so you can have like Iono 
or Bozilla go over Sandra Moon there. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually excited for that match. I think, you know, it's it's cool to see the Mari Gold girls uh, against yeah. an outsider. Or outsiders, I should say. Um, and I'm also, happy Sandra for Kazuna. Moon rocks. I think yeah, Sandra, Sandra Moon's Moon is very cool. good. Sandra Moon's yeah. very good. But also, I'm happy for Kazuna, who is a huge Noah fan. Um, oh, that's nice. She had a, no, a Keno shrine when she was a, a no teenager. Way. Yeah, she like famously it was That's great. like her room was like it was crazy. Um, All right. Her, her, um, I think her mom used to make fun of her for it. Her dad, one of them did. Uh, that was like, <laughs> look at look at this kid's room. This chick is insane. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm I'm happy that she gets to share a share a card with Keno and be on Noah. She famously yeah. was in the crowd for one of the Noah shows like last year, and she Dylan, we are on hour two. Please, <laughs> I do not need Kazuna lore. Everybody needs Kazuna lore. Do not Go need Kazuna Law. Uh, I am hoping we get some Takumi Miko Ono exchanges. That is yeah, all. I'm sure you do. Um, <laughs> you said that's so. <laughs> that sounds so bad. Um, <laughs> in another bit of news, um, Rossi Ogawa wants Nori to be part of the Dream Star Grand Prix. Uh, as we said, like two weeks ago, when everybody was like, "Oh, it's definitely Sol Ruka," and I was like, "It's clearly Nori," and it is clearly Nori. Yeah. Uh, it's not official yet because Takako and Kandori were like, "You're not poaching her, right? Like that's not what this is. You're not, you're not stealing her, are you?" And Rossi, Rossi said, like, "I don't no, even know what that no. word means. I don't <laughs> such a... poaching. Is that a, is that is he, that a is that an he's, adverb? He's I don't... such an iconic poster. He is so funny. fucking funny. Like, <laughs> he, 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 <laughs> he extends his hand, and Kandori's like, "I'm not fucking shaking your hand, motherfucker." That's crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, he said he wants to make the announcement on the 19th, which is their cork, and, and he probably will get to do that. They'll they'll do, do an agreement. And then we'll probably find out the blocks that day as well. Yeah. So I'm very excited about that. Um so we officially have our have the wrestlers that are in the tournament. Yeah, we'd have all 16 by that point. I'm not going through them all. We'll do that next week. Well, no, but um, my, my point, since we're not reviewing, are we reviewing the Mario Gold shows? I didn't watch them, so. Exactly. So my point was going to be, that now Shikawa, uh, Kazuma Tanaka, and Victoria Izuki, or not now Shikawa, Chika Goto. Oh, yeah. No, I see. I was just yeah. going to like say all that next week. I mean, we have the blocks because it would but, make sense then who goes through that's important, anyway. That's important news from this past People week. People will know. Kazuna, Victoria, right. and Chika Goto won and are now in the tournament. Now yeah, Shikawa's I think not. people would know once they're announced, though. So. Oh, and also, Re- Rea Seto broke her ribs. Yeah, what is with the marigold injuries? Like, I feel like this is one a week. One person every weekend misses a show. It's very, po- without, it's very possible know. that it is just sort of a case of uh, they don't wrestle enough. Um, but they wrestle Maybe. every weekend. They wrestle twice. Yeah, a week, so I don't know. That's, yeah, like, that's pretty. That's pretty. Stable. Zeta was off the show as well, and I don't Zeta's know if she's with like still. Injury. Yeah, I don't know if Zeta's coming back. Like that was meant to be one of her last shows, so mm-hmm. I don't know if she's gonna come back now or if she's done. No um, but I don't know, marigold. Bit of a mess in some regards. Utami's um, back, by the way. Yeah, that was nice. Um, there Good was match. something involved. Was there something involving Utami we were meant to bring up? I don't think so. Um, but yeah. So, Marigold is running Cork on she the loves 19th. Women. Yeah, well, we knew that. That's not news. Um, so that's Monday, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm, if I can count, that is Monday. Um, we currently so. don't have a card for it though, and I am. I wonder if maybe they're like trying to see who's healthy or whatnot, but we do know three matches, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes. For the United National Championship, it is Miko Iono defending against Koki, which is a very cool match if you've been a, a longtime actress viewer. Um, and I mean, Miko is going to retain, but that's going to be one of those yes. losing up scenarios for Koki. Yeah, we'll see if she could rise to the occasion, you know what I mean? Do something yeah. amazing. Everything that she does, she dominates it. But will she dominate this? That's the question. Yes. Um, her Speaking of Koki, her teammate, Go Chika, is teaming with Nanai Takahashi to take on Arisa Nakajima and Sari. Uh, that was never... That Sari? No, but when Shupro translated it, they were like, that was the, that was the proposal. So, mm. um, Arisa Nakajima's retirement tour... Nanai asked to be part of it. She was like, hey, listen, you know, me, me and Arisa, we go way back. Um, and so she asked for that match, and Chika basically volunteered to be Nanai's tag partner. So that's the storyline there. Um, so Gochika is going to get the shit kicked out of her, but her and Nanai are going to rise to the occasion, and that's how they're going to get over. But I would imagine Sari wins that one for her team. 
Yeah, probably. I'm happy yeah, to see also... Sari and Nakajima one more time. Yeah, it's, it's cool to see Nakajima and Marigold as well. It's nice. Wait, that is, is Sari? That. Sari isn't her tag partner in the final match, is she? No, it's Hiroyo. Yeah, it's uh, no. I think she's against Hiroyo, but I know Nakamori's in it. Oh, it's and it's I know Sukasa. Sukasa. Yeah, yeah, yeah Sukasa. So yeah, this yeah. is the last Sari X uh, Arisa match. Yeah, it's it's crazy how quickly uh, Arisa Nakajima's retirement is coming in on us. Like it just feels yeah. like it came out of nowhere. Um, but I think this uh, also has me hopeful that we will see Mako in Marigold. That you know, if they could get Arisa Nakajima in for something, then they'll be able to get Mako in for some of her retirement tour, which would be fun. Um, what's the last match? Oh, the last Corkin match is Julia versus My Sakurai and Julia's big send off. Um, Julia has been so bad recently from all accounts that people just don't want to see her anymore, which is crazy. Like, even people who are really nice about wrestling have been like, Julia, you do not got it anymore. Go away, which is crazy. Um, I think I haven't watched a lot of the stuff, but I do think she's probably just in prime preserving her body mode and doesn't want to get hurt ahead of her big contract. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not watching that Miku match, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's it's 15 fair. minutes. It's. Uh... Yeah. Um, I would imagine she'll go all out for my Sakurai, though. I mean, they're good friends. I think that's Julia. I think Julia understands how if she goes all out and like gives it her best, then my Sakurai can gain a lot of it, even if she loses. You know, it's going to be again one of those matches where the loser gains a lot through their performance. And I think if Julia, Julia says she wants to make my Sakurai main eventer through this match, yeah, like that's what you so. can do. You know, you can do that if everybody's good enough, but I. I think Julia will have to really be on her game. Like we're gonna have to see the Julia that we haven't seen since she I'm won more the world confident, title, basically. I'm more confident in my Sakurai right now than I am in Julia. Yes. In this, that yeah. Set. That's and that's saying a lot. Yeah. Um, Especially as a singles, uh, my Sakurai yeah. is very hit or miss in singles. So you know, it's uh quite interesting there and what 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 they're gonna do. Um. And yeah, it's, it's a shame we don't know the rest of the card because they usually pull some stuff out for Corkin. But I guess I, I would say they're probably just trying to see who's healthy and what's going on first. Um, it's been a pretty hectic. They haven't announced anything. While. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think it's safe to say that the shows in general, based on just what I'm, you know, I, I've seen myself and what I've talked to people about, they're really in a bit of a lull going into the Grand Prix. It feels like they got Sumo Hall little... out of the way and everybody's just kind of like, okay. That's chillax for a second. So, some of some of these, I think that they're really benefiting from having enough wrestlers to run six women's because those are yeah. usually really fun. Um, mm. But like the undercard matches are usually uh, uh, Julia is usually. Um, but like I, I watched the world spots as well where the crowd is yeah. not good. Sa- Saitama was Saitama was a pretty solid spot. Um, I liked both of the tag matches from from that card, uh, yeah. but the the opener. The opening two matches were whatever, and I didn't watch the main event because it's a 15-minute Julia time on the draw. I think it's so, 20. I'm, pretty sure I'm it's definitely 20. not watching the match. This is the main event. Julia. Yeah. Draw. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's Marigold. You know, I didn't. I don't want to skip over it altogether, but I really do think it is just in a. They are waiting for the Corkin to send Julia off before they kickstart again. She, um, Chiaki's been looking badass. She does. I love the headband. I love the headband. Yeah, I love the headband. Um, I love the the scar. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, there's not really much else to say about Marigold, especially if they're not gonna <laughs> announce a card for us to discuss. So, yeah, that's this that. Is the last I step, did... stop on the way to the Dream Star, though. Like the last, last big one. Yeah, I yeah. Been... I mean, hopefully, we'll have the blocks this time next week to discuss. Um, yes. Or you know, you and whomever you might have to get based on availability. Um, but yeah, Marigold. Marigold's. Marigold's maybe uh their, their twitter is pretty quiet though so they haven't announced any card that i've missed anyway so that's that for marigold uh it's a fun time you know kind of sometimes but that is that for this show we have gone a long time i i do have to cut some stuff out so hopefully it's not over the limit <laughs> otherwise we're a bit screwed um but yeah uh we'll be back next week maybe to discuss the the five star and whatever happens in marigold but with that, it is time to close the show. If you want to stand, you may stand. If you want to sit, you may sit. Believe today, shine tomorrow. You decide what you believe in. Ijo. Ijo.